Isn't there more air than there is building around you? Yeah. Like that's, when you just throw it straight no. up in the air? There's more air than building. <laughs> that's correct. Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. Everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from Cinema Sins. Joined as always by the voice of Cinema Sins, Jeremy Scott. Hakuna Matata. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, That's right. No worries. No That's worries. Right. Yeah. And uh, from music video sins, Barrett Share. Good day. Mm-hmm. 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 That means no worries. Um, that means Buenos Dias oh, in yeah. English. Oh, it does you're mean right. That. You're right. You're right. It does. Clever. <laughs> yes. Um, today we're going to uh, finish out our uh, Marvel phases with Phase Three. What kind of fun? Truth is, I am Iron Man. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Dance off, bro. Me and you. We know each other. He's a friend from work. I have an army. We have a Hulk. Language. Now, phase three is not uh, it's not done yet. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, It's got Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's got Cam- Captain Marvel and the the second half of this Avengers <laughs> thing. Uh, I know I, I know I would, like previously argued like. Here's a th- here's a some inside baseball. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, when I when this Avengers Infinity War comes out on Blu-ray and it's time to send it, mm-hmm. so much of the stuff is going to be erased by the time that fourth one comes yeah. out. Yeah, like they're gonna just trample over so many things. And if we sit here and be like, "Well, why did this happen?" and then they explain it in the next movie. Then, well, but but again, to your argument that it was like a self-sustained movie, it is. It's just not the, the next movie is going to explain a bunch of that shit. But it still has to hold up within its own its own narrative. It I does. actually think I don't know. I'm actually really starting to look forward to Avengers Four. Oh, I'm totally. I think it may it. really delight me and ultimately make me enjoy Infinity War more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do also predict I will end up watching them collectively as one big movie, mm-hmm. but I think there's a path to closure that doesn't necessarily negate issues you might find in Infinity War as much as it... I think they're going to use alternate realities or time travel, mm-hmm. and I don't know that that necessarily explains away things we might question about what we see in Infinity War. I need to watch Infinity War again, though. Yeah, me too. But... But yeah, we may delay that just for that reason. Just yeah, a heads up, everybody. It may be just like Hunger Games when part one <laughs> and two came out. We yeah. had to just wait. Um, but uh, yeah, and another thing, uh, I know that, uh, so I'm the only one here who watched all 19 movies. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not expecting anybody else in this room to do what I did, <laughs> right? And uh, I watched these. I took, I took notes, but I did not like go crazy on notes because mm-hmm. I had to get it done or yeah. whatever. So we're getting now some people who are like, man, it's so frustrating that you missed this and you, and you told the, told this thing wrong or whatever. And it's like, I don't, I don't know. Well, listen, if you can't come up with, you know, very minute details, that's understandable, but it's not like you didn't, you crammed for this. It's not like uh, we, we've seen all of them. We've seen all of them probably a few times or some of them a few times. And like if if with that knowledge, if you're if you're missing shit, yeah, then they haven't really done their well, job. Well, a lot of times know. people think again. We project an image of something that we are not. We project the image of a person that has magnifying glass a movie fifty times before saying one word about it and is an expert. That's the image we project. Mm-hmm. We are not actually that. We got shit to do. We yeah. got more videos to make. I might watch a movie once or twice and write some sins, but if it's your favorite movie, like God, there was one guy who sent me this message about how he loved Cinema Sins all the way up until that last Jedi video, and that's the one where he realized our critics were right and we hate movies. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was like, I, just, I giggled and giggled because I'm like, oh, you're you're showing your bias. Your bias is showing. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I it's 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 going to happen. I'm going to miss some stuff. I watch these things in a row. Like I watched uh, it, it. It didn't. It wasn't 19 movies in 19 days. It was more like 19 movies in like 15 days. Right. <laughs> and uh, and so like I wrote down as much notes as I could. And I'm I'm gonna fuck some stuff up, man. There's it's no right. doubt about it. If we get you, you're gonna have more coverage here though, because 
uh, first of all, I'm personally most excited to talk about this phase. Yeah. This is, I think, the best phase of the three. This is where they have finally gotten all their shit together on most places in making these films. Um, I like more of phase three percentage wise than I do of any other phase. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we've all seen them more recently. Yep. And because of sinning. So, like, I've seen Thor, Thor Ragnarok twice. Mm-hmm. I've seen Spider-Man Homecoming more than 12 times. It's been, it's been running been over and over yeah. on stars on my computer or on my TV at home. Um, uh, we have more familiarity with some of these. Doctor Strange we've seen mm-hmm. and then sinned. And so I think Barrett and I will be even better able to jump in here and there and maybe fill in a gap or two. But we're going to fuck shit up, too. But mm-hmm. ultimately, once uh, somebody came on and told me that I had messed up the ending of Iron Man 3 and what happened to Killian and all that mm-hmm. other type of stuff. Uh, I was like, you know what? I'm I can't wait to go into phase three and tell tell you that I remember Thanos wearing a dress in Civil War. There's so many things that are wrong with that statement. But like that's you know, I mean that's how much this sort of you know, this is what happens with this, you know, nineteen fucking movies. Yeah, man. Uh anyway, the uh, phase three is kicked off with Captain America Civil War. It's basically a de facto Avengers movie. Yep. Doesn't have Thor, doesn't have Hulk because they're off Ragnarokking somewhere. Yep. Ragnarokking. Um but uh, the movie begins off with Cap, Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, and Falcon all trying to go after this Frank Grio character who's now, he's it's, his name was Brock, but I think they're trying to they call him something. Uh, Mr. Punchy. Mr. Punchy. <laughs> that's what it is. They call him, at Crossbones, I believe. Is yeah, no, it is yeah, Crossbones. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. And uh, so, like, uh, so they're all going after this guy because he's sort of a terrorist and all this sort of stuff. And they, they surround him, they get him, they're re- and he's, he's about to bomb Captain America. Mm-hmm. And Scarlet Witch takes the bomb and throws it up into a building. <laughs> and still, after watching it again, I still don't understand what the fuck she was thinking. She was thinking she read the script. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, ha- they had to kill some Wakandans to trigger some things i guess so i watched this movie again this is one of the they're few in that siberia I... or no they're not in siberia they're they're not in wakanda though they're no, not they're in Lagos. they're not Lagos, but i'm pretty right. sure that there are wakandan aid workers in that building there that there died. are that's right there, there are. are um there are this is the only movie i intentionally rewatched in phase three for this discussion uh-huh. um and i stopped two-thirds of the way th- i stopped after the airport fight because mm-hmm. i wasn't having very much fun um Yes, it, I don't know what the hell she's thinking, and would Captain America even die from a bomb? I don't think so. I like, actually don't think maybe he, his he uniform would. would singe. Yeah. But hasn't he survived that kind of shit? But yeah. that's that's what that's what we have. That's where we have those issues with things that happen in mo- in these movies, right? Where we don't know whether he would or not. We th- we're pretty sure he would, though, mm-hmm. considering what we've seen of him and yeah i know some people are going to come in defense of scarlet witch there and say well, what would you do captain america has got a bomb you want to save him you're just not going to think about where that bomb goes i guess not i don't know you, you think you a little wouldn't bit wouldn't throw it into a building isn't there <laughs> more air than there is building around you yeah like that's, you just that's, throw that's, it straight up in the air there's more air than building <laughs> that's correct um by the way it, i feel like this is important that it's these characters who are who are in this in this uh beginning part because all of them except for black widow yeah. even though black widow turns in the end end up being on that one side yeah and i think it's important uh, as, as far as the civil war is concerned uh understanding that the reason why they're on that side is that they realize that they need to be there they need to fix these problems that are going on and everything that's why they're on this side mm-hmm. at the end. and i think captain america has gone through enough at winter soldier and all that to finally realize he can't trust the government and you know the government is the one saying we can't do this we can't do this anymore you need we need to sign off on all of your missions from well and i think I'm pretty, I know I said before that you could have swapped those two, Cap and Iron Man, in this story. That's what I said coming out of the movie. And I mostly it's just spoke to my frustration at how little stakes there are. Because mm-hmm. I do think you're right, in hindsight, that they, you can't really flip them in this movie. Because mm-hmm. they do have motivations that have built in previous movies up until now. Mm-hmm. But that being said, when Iron Man is getting legit angry at Cap on that airstrip, yeah. that is the least authentic Robert Downey Jr. has ever been <laughs> as that character. Yeah. Because even he knows this is some bullshit yeah, right here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry, come on. Um, So this leads to the Sokovia Accords. Yep. Um, where, Let me where, ask you this. I'm yeah. sorry. So this came out and then Batman versus Superman came out right around the same time. No. Right? 
Batman vs Superman came out right before. Came this. out in March. Came out in March, and then this came. It was out. they were these were the movies that were originally supposed to be on the same day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then Warner Brothers flinched and decided to go with March because yeah. Cap started adding all those motherfuckers. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that's uh, it's a game changer. But still, the main part of both of these movies, I obviously like this better than I do Batman vs Superman. But it starts with such a goddamn slog mm-hmm. because collateral damage and all that stuff. And you got Bruce Wayne going into to Metropolis and all this this stuff is happening. Yeah. Well, then you got the Sokovia Accords because shit went wrong, you know, a few movies in a row and stuff like that. And now we have responsibility for these superheroes. You know, one of the reasons that Infinity War and Black Panther and like the rest of the, the movies in this phase work so well is that it doesn't dwell on that shit anymore. I'm telling mm. you, that news that Comcast is making a last minute bid to buy Fox instead <laughs> of Disney makes me so happy. <laughs> because watching Civil War, I'm, I'm, this is a less of a problem in Infinity War, but I don't, I don't need any more heroes in this. Yeah. But what, what I thought you were going to say and what, about Batman v Superman and Civil War is that it, both movies start with the fan service idea of what if our heroes fought each other? Mm-hmm. And neither movie really sells me on the reason being enough for these people to actually especially, try and kill each especially other. Especially in Batman v Superman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, especially it's more in that. <laughs> yeah. But even yeah. in this one, you know, there's that joke about you're pulling your punches. Yeah, you never yeah, really yeah. feel like any of this is actually going to lead to stakes. Yep. And I think that's what ultimately frustrates me about the movie. I'm sorry. I keep yeah. interrupting the flow of this. I don't, I agree. I don't think that they have, they have given a building reason throughout the, all the movies to get to this point. Like this has come out of nowhere. They didn't give a fuck about anybody they killed <laughs> exactly. up until the Sokovia. Yeah, thing. exactly. And, they, and, and so like, uh, that's what comes off so hollow about their, about them pitting themselves against each other and everything. Uh, this is where we meet Black Panther for the first time. This yeah. is at this UN, uh, this UN meeting. 117 nations have all gotten together and agreed that these goddamn Avengers, man, they're too much of a trouble. <laughs> you know, the ones that saved the planet they uh, saved several the planet times. time and time <laughs> that again. That be the most unbelievable thing this, about this movie. This is the UN. drives me up the wall, by the way. 117 nations. The fucking Avengers killed goddamn aliens coming down from the fucking... W- they killed goddamn aliens! And they're like, yeah, you know what, though? They have killed a few people that they shouldn't have <laughs> fuck me man. I know, man we see black panther here and we see his dad and his dad is a big uh big driving force behind these sokovia cords which is going to split these avengers up and everything now at the un a bomb goes off mm-hmm. bum, 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 bum. everybody dies except for black panther and yes. black widow <laughs> <laughs> i guess so right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah including daddy yeah, black, yeah. black panther yeah daddy black, daddy black panther <laughs> i don't know what his name king is he's black panther he's right king t'chaka <laughs> it is but he has a black panther name right or wasn't he black panther before? i think he was black yeah, panther yeah. and then he, he, he passed. passed the mantle yeah. I, see. I see um so this movie is complex, man. There's so many things going on. The bomb is blamed on the Winter Soldier. Right. Of course. Uh, we know that there's this, uh, Zemo guy who's behind all this, but he's found a way to, like, frame the Winter Soldier mm-hmm. with this, like, garage footage. Yeah, that you can barely fucking see, but everybody immediately <laughs> yeah, identifies. Exactly. It. By the way, I, I, I think I said in the previous one that Winter Soldier had the most head scratching moments that I wrote down. But if I had actually gone through all of Zemo's plan in, mm-hmm. in this thing, I think that would have beaten the record because, uh, Zemo's plan is all of this takes place in a year. Yep. Mm-hmm. Zemo's family dies because of the, all the stuff that happens in Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, he just happens to be away and away from it. And he's like, all right, I'm going to get, I'm going to get revenge on the Avengers. I'm not only going to find out where all these Hydra guys are mm-hmm. somehow. Someone, well, I know, I know that black widow has sent all this stuff on the internet, like the, at the end of winter yeah, soldier, yeah. but they, does it have the guy's home address? I guess I guess. So. It has, okay. The one in Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to find all these Hydra guys. These guys are hiding out. <laughs> I'm going to get them to tell me some shit. I'm going to find the rift between Tony and and Cap. I'm going to find something that's yes. going to just, it's going to murder them. It's going to murder their relationship. I, I That's all from what Black Widow sent? Yep. 
And whatever he found after that, how do you find that shit? Like, know. oh, you know what? If uh, he ever found out that uh, Winter Soldier killed Tony's parents, oh my God, that's going to cause this such movie, a rift. Yeah, this movie reminds me a lot of, of the problems that we had with The Last Jedi in that it wants its characters to get to a place and get to a fight, and it doesn't really care about how that happens. Well, that's the thing. The entire film was built around the concept of what if our heroes were split on two sides and had to fight each other, and everything follows from that. Yeah. And it's frustrating because I don't think even in a comic form, I think it's historically, at least the first one, the Civil War is historically not something fans of the Marvel comics liked. Oh, really? No. Um, and again, it's just... It's just a... It, it's the kind of fan service I'm frustrated about with Kiki Man in Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only it's a whole movie of it, right? Wouldn't it be cool to see her punch him? Blam! Yeah. Kazowie! Nah, 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 nah. I'm just not entertained by that anymore. Yeah. I want bad guys to go down. Yeah. Fuck. And, yeah. And, I, and uh, how they find the Winter Soldier, apparently, like, people been talking. They seen Winter Soldier around. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, the, uh, the uh the girl who the ends up being the love interest in this peggy the, is it no her name's sharon she's peggy is. carter's sharon carter peggy yeah peggy carter's niece yeah, yeah but uh she's she's sort of going against orders and saying well we we have some idea of where he is don't know how he just yeah. somehow has that information <laughs> i guess he's been spotted a few times sure. i don't know he's um, like santa claus he is like Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, that the leads to soldier, see? that leads to a whole big like you know Black Panthers going after him and uh, and like uh, Cap's trying to help him and all this other stuff. So like then that ends up being where they just get caught on the freeway by Don Cheadle shows up. And, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don Cheadle shows up and says, "You, he's like, how is it? You know, he's like, hey Cap, congratulations, you're a criminal or some <laughs> shit like that." By the way, that action sequence with Black Panther uh, on the highway and all that stuff, there's some maddening cuts in there. I think we actually referenced it in the Sins video. There was five cuts within, like, two seconds yeah. of Black Panther. But then there are a couple of, like, really nice scenes that are a little bit, like, right when he jumps from the uh, the truck to the motorcycle or something mm. like that. And it's like you could see the, the Russo brothers kind of evolving. Yeah, over although that very beginning scene where... Oh my God, man. I, I, I nearly threw up how many times. <laughs> like it's shaky and like super close up and edited to death mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, but yeah, they, they're probably getting a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, uh, I think Cap and, and crew are, are, are fine as long as they sign these accords. Mm -hmm. So they've got, they've got Winter Soldier in, in custody and everything. This is another part of Zemo's master plan. He somehow infiltrates this one, this like, this like remote place like he 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 obviously knew that no, first off okay so the bomb happens in vienna uh -huh. they catch winter soldier in uh where did they go for that it's a completely it's a it's a whole other country <laughs> <laughs> And then they have to, they go to Germany, I think, where this is where they, they, they keep him. Yeah, yeah. So it's three different countries here. Yeah. Some shit happens in Vienna, they go to another country, then they go to Germany. Yeah. Um, so Zemo knows that, well, if this shit's going to go down, then I'm going to have to infiltrate this place in Germany where they obviously would, <laughs> would question this guy or whatever. Um, and poses as a psychiatrist. Yeah, psychiatrist. poses as a yeah. psychiatrist and he's learned all the key words to get him yeah. programmed and everything. It's sort of like the sun is going down <laughs> type of thing. The sun's getting really low. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's, isn't that what, isn't that the shit he got in Cleveland? Isn't that why he went to Cleveland was mm -hmm. to get those code words? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a, it's what a in the fucking book. convoluted plan. Yep. Yeah. Um, he does this in a year. <laughs> it's a fucking year. Yeah. Well, and then like he must Thanos. have never slept. <laughs> Thanos is slacking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, God, I know. Know. <laughs> um, so that the questioning is going on and, uh, they're, yeah, they're in this, uh, they're, this is where Tony and Cap sort of start to draw their, draw the lines in the sand. Mm -hmm. Tony, by the way, is has started to feel remorse for everything he does. Like this is sort of a a theme with him. He feels guilt, and he has this <laughs> he has this moment where Alfre Woodard is just waiting for him outside <laughs> of an elevator, some random place that you couldn't possibly know Tony Stark was going to be. <laughs> she's like 
she's like waiting for him at an elevator and she's like by the way you killed my son and <laughs> in age of ultron um so zemo uh ends up going to siberia where we find out that they've been making these other super soldiers there's other super soldiers just frozen mm -hmm. in ice in Sib siberia so you're like oh shit he's going over there and he's gonna unleash the fury basically <laughs> and he's gonna bring all these super soldiers into the to the mix which we've found out that the russo brothers were playing on audience expectations with uh -huh. and this is not his plan at all his plan is Psych. to get tony and cap to fight yeah oh yeah um, he, that's all that's all he's after yeah god yeah. damn this movie exactly <laughs> um and then another one tony's like finds find spider-man Mm -hmm. to help him out in this civil war yeah like they're, he's they're... so guilt-ridden about killing a teen he recruits a teen <laughs> <laughs> to deathly battle and he shows him a youtube video and says this is you right and he's like uh and then like fucking a that that was yada yada yeah how do you know that's him but yeah nobody knows it's him I except know. him yeah, yeah. there's ne and that's never been explained no nope. never no nope. Like, oh, well, I guess Tony's just that good. Huh? Yep. He knows that there's some random he high school student. everything he needs to know when he needs to know it. That's right. Yeah, the Spider-Man joining that battle is both the best and worst thing about this whole movie. Because I will admit, when he tr tries to grab Winter Soldier and does that, you have a metal arm? That's awesome! Mm -hmm. That's the that's one of the best, purest joy moments in all the MCU. Mm. Uh, and it's just, it speaks more to how much they nailed Spider-Man in his casting. But he the only reason he's here is to introduce him mm -hmm. so he can have his own movie later. It makes no sense. It makes less sense than Tony deciding to want to kill Cap at the end after he finds out Winter Soldier yeah. was his parents' <laughs> murderer. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the whole, the whole uh, impetus to their fight is that because Zemo goes to Siberia, all the people who are on the side of, we need to go fucking find that guy, want to go find that guy. Whereas the people who are government lackeys at this point have decided well we can't do that until they tell us that we can mm -hmm. and so there's a big fight at the airport mm -hmm. and uh the fight is fine it's absolutely fine it is, mm -hmm. it's, it's okay yeah it works it's got that ant-man moment which yeah. is which is terrific yeah that's another maybe one, like, the, my favorite part of the movie uh now we know that it's coming but it was so surprising when you first watch and you're like oh holy shit yeah because up until then it's like why is he really here you i know? did notice there's just like I think what sums up the whole movie for me, or at least how I feel about it, is that right when the fight starts and everybody starts breaking off in different directions and Spider-Man's like, Tony, what do I do, Mr. Stark? What do I And he's like, what we talked about? Web him up from afar. Don't get killed. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Shouldn't be here. Anyway, so he goes flying and you see it cuts to like Winter Soldier and Falcon. And they're like running through the terminal and they look over and see Spider-Man swinging. And one of them says like, what the hell is that thing? They are jogging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like they are, there is no urgency whatsoever to their, you watch that scene again when we're done. They are just like, -doo -doo, what? I'm running around Washington DC, getting my workout on. And oh, there's a Spider-Man. And I'm like, this, the, what? <laughs> that speaks to the whole movie to me. Yeah. There's no stakes. There's yeah. no real urgency to any of that. It does look cool. Yeah. It looks cool when guy does that. Looks great when girl does that. I don't ne care. Never understood, by the way, why they don't just, uh, destroy the plane that they're yeah gonna, that's all they had to do yeah, yeah. yeah they and, even identify it like the first minute instead of the fight. they just guard it and they let black widow guard it yeah. who's <laughs> completely out of the fucking picture <laughs> and then like by the time by the time uh you know cap and winter soldier get to the th that point she's like all right i'll let you go yeah, yeah that whole and, fight was for nothing yeah and uh so they get into this uh this uh quinjet which we'll, we'll hear a bunch more about. Quinjet! <laughs> Quinjet! Um, so they go to Siberia. And then, yeah, a lot of shit happens. Mm -hmm. Iron <sighs> Man, now Iron Man decides he's gonna, he's gonna go to Siberia, even though they have a huge, well, actually, we are kind of yada yadding over the, the one big major thing that happens in the fight is that Rhodes does get shot down accidentally by mm -hmm. vision. Yep, mm -hmm. but doesn't die. Doesn't die and falcon's like oh i'm sorry tony and tony's like boom yeah, yeah, yeah just hits him and it's like okay well he hurt himself i guess and he mm -hmm. didn't he didn't die which we don't want him to die but still come on yeah this none of that, that was your sort that of was, your that's that sort of your like way of paying for all your exactly fight. they're like oh well this is real now and then you're like he's uh, yeah really don't yeah. you just sort of fix a lot of this movie's problems <clears throat> if you go back to that first scene where Scarlet Witch accidentally kills the aid workers, 
and rework that so that somebody makes an intentional choice that ends up with somebody more important being dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mm. one of the heroes being dead or, you know, I just feel like <clears throat> that sets up more important stakes, right? Like mm -hmm. somehow Deadpool 2 has more stakes in its final fight than this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's Definitely. a problem. Yes. And I'm Even about has... to rave about the rest of the Phase 3 <laughs> movies, just FYI. <laughs> So yeah, the, the, after all that, that's the big thing. Go to Siberia. Uh, even though uh, uh, Cap and Winter Soldier have this huge head start, uh, mm -hmm. Tony even stops by the prison <laughs> yeah. and talks to <laughs> talks to Ross there for a bit. There are two Rosses now, by the way. There's the one William Hurt plays, and there's the one Martin Freeman plays. Oh yeah, they're not right. related yeah, yeah. at yeah, all. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Um, but uh, he goes over to the William Hurt Ross and <laughs> and and. Uh, talks to him at the jail and then goes to siberia and he manages to get to siberia around the time that's right <laughs> captain winter soldier this is on a game board and <laughs> exactly they come in and they're like truce okay cool truce yay <laughs> yay they're Roll credits. and then suddenly they go in zemo's behind this big metal fucking nuclear <laughs> yeah. whatever thing and and uh sh start showing videos <laughs> and shows winter soldier killed tony's parents from multiple angles and it too. snaps tony this is the worst fucking part of the movie to I, me. I would agree yes this is, i i i know that some of you out there love you some civil war <laughs> yep. but my god does this movie crumble fast for me <laughs> when just all the stuff that couldn't have happened happens the battles don't have very any don't ha aren't interesting and then after the truce and he knows that winter soldier has no control over his actions yeah, i know <laughs> He yeah. has no, he's been programmed. Yeah. How does he not know this by now? He goes, fuck that. I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> it's a very Cartman like reaction. Isn't it? <laughs> God damn you guys. <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> and get <him. laughs> <laughs> I want to see Civil War reenacted with the South Park. Oh guys. my God. It would be awesome. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It rings so hollow to me. And I, I have not watched the how it should have ended for that movie. Mm -hmm. um, they make great content. I don't have enough time to watch all of it, but I, I would give good money that it's just Tony turning to Zemo and going, "Yeah, but he was brainwashed, yeah. right?" And then just <laughs> exactly. blasting it exactly. Mm -hmm. Like I, it's just it's not only just a a lazy bit of writing, but it's just like extremely lazy, mm, yeah. and, it, and it's frustrating. And uh, yeah, they uh, Cap, Iron Man, and Winter Soldier all proceed to fight. We saw most of it in the trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, Lots of like stuff where the shield is bouncing off of things, and then Tony comes out and shoots a laser, and then then there's punching. Yep, a lot of punching, a lot of punching. Oh, so much punching. And he could do this all where, day. Yeah, he can. He can do this all day. Now that is a sort of a chilled, bump-inducing moment. After he he said that in the first one, and he was when he was a scrawny kid, and that was his mm -hmm. that was his mantra basically, and everything. It 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 is a chill, bump-inducing moment when he says that. Still, though, yeah. there's nothing that we can take from this fight other than, eh, they, we're going to shrug that off yep. after this movie's over. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there's a Actually, point, before the movie's over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a point where, there's a point where, uh, Cap is beating Tony's ass and, and his new, uh, suit, which has a, like a now a female voice or mm -hmm. whatever. Friday? It, is that what they call him? I think he calls her Friday. Yeah. Uh, he's able to, like, hey, say something like, figure out his attack pattern right and then, yeah. and then the suit like comes in and just starts wailing on cap that's just before the i can take this all yeah, day yeah. Like. and then uh, by the end of it cap does end up like just knocking him down enough to where tony's done mm -hmm. and tony does the petty thing like that shield that was my dad and his dad built that for you blah 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 and he says all right fuck it <laughs> you know um the you know the yeah we uh black panther's the one who ends up uh finding zemo outside enjoying the nature yep just, <laughs> just hanging out kicking out snow. kicking yep. it listening to his voicemail yeah listening to his voicemail uh, the the voicemail of his wife before she died yeah and, and see that that little detail is interesting to mm -hmm, me yeah. it gives him a little bit of motivation if they had expanded those little details to give him more of a story of a reason of uh, that kind of thing what would have made him happy i i just kill Iron him the fuck out of killing one of the other mm -hmm. is that really all he wanted i guess so well, I, he wanted to fracture. He them. wanted to fracture them. Yeah, it was, and and even by the end of it, when Martin Freeman's uh, 
interviewing him. He's like, well, you failed, didn't you? He goes, did I? We yeah. haven't really gotten anything from that since. Yeah. Now they uh, have fractured butthole. Yeah, that's right. Butthole? <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the way, the whole the whole thing with the shield, I don't want to yada yada over that. His cat uses his shield to just sort of wedge it into Iron Man's suit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, just comes that close to actually hitting him in the heart, I guess, with it or whatever. But just gives a good gash is all he does or yep. whatever um but uh that was another one of those things where i'm like is cap shield stronger than iron man suit is because iron man suit we've seen it endure so many things and and yeah. you know i don't know i don't know we don't know nope um the in credit scene in the mid credits um uh, captain america with the c- consent of black panther takes bucky to heal in wakanda which of course semi-tains is what we see in Avengers Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's a cool scene. And Black Panther as well also has the has that scene, has a scene sort of updating us on him because we always worry about what Winter Soldier's up to. Fucking Bucky. Whenever Winter Soldier's not on the screen, all the other characters should be asking, where's Winter Soldier? <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. And the final credit scene is uh, Peter Parker in his room playing with that gadget that Tony gives him. Which I did we even do we it's, even know it's something to do with the suit or something no, like it's, that? I feel like it's completely yada yada yeah. by the time homecoming com- comes around. I remember people talking about it and getting excited about something, and I don't remember what it yeah, what it was. Maybe because yeah. yeah. I mean he's he's already got the suit, the yeah. suit they gave him at the airport fight. He st- starts homecoming with that suit, mm-hmm. so I don't know what could be additional. I don't know. I don't know. It was just a <laughs> it was just a fuck you. Yes, it was just a tease. Yes. Um, oh, what was the Stan Lee cameo, by the way, if we're, uh, we're going to keep that up? The Stan Lee cameo. Was he the FedEx driver in that one? Oh, he, he calls Tony something, Tony Stank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He calls him Tony, Tony Stank. Stank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and, uh, and Rhodes is like, hold on, I got to <laughs> take a moment. <laughs> Doctor Strange comes in, yeah. uh, directed by Scott Derrickson of Sinister. Right. What, a, what a transition. Yeah. I mean, I get that Doctor Strange has some mystical elements, um, and I liked Sinister more than I like most horror mm-hmm. movies, uh, that, that, especially because the Sins video is so much fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. um, but um, what do you what do you see? What do you think they saw in Sinister? I'm not. I'm trying to not insult I, they, the they, guy. Well, they do this a lot. I mean, it started with John Favreau, and then you know they've they've tried out James Gunn. Like they've tried out like. A yeah. lot of newcomers. Yeah. And I guess it's like the Kenneth Brana. Takio Wakiti. Takio Wakiti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takio Wakiti. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Peyton Reed, even the Russo brothers coming out of television. Like, this is this is kind of a, a trend there. And Derrickson killed it. Yeah, I really I, like this movie. I, I like this more the second and third time I saw it than I did the first time. And I liked it the first time. Um, you know, we do. it has some issues. There's a, there's a very Tony Stark in quality to this character. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do... We do again waste a great actress that we've cast as a romantic lead. Um, there's some controversy revolving the potential whitewashing of the main character, the ancient one. Um, but man, this movie's fun. Yep. It has one of the most hilarious climax endings I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the visuals are just stunning, like inception levels of I've never seen anything quite like this uh, stunning. And uh, it's going to keep me going back for that reason. Mm. yeah benedict cumberbatch plays stephen strange and he is a he's an asshole Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh but at the very beginning there's a pretty amusing scene with him doing this surgery and everything and uh and like these like guys trying to stump him on music and like he he get can get it down to the month yeah yeah. like you know when these songs came out i thought you're gonna do something hard and everything uh but um but yeah the the sort of the impetus behind him getting into this situation is he's in his car driving an insane amount of speed on this cliffside uh like basic instinct yeah type of in new york in, yeah <laughs> no uh, that's real man that's real uh yeah somewhere in upstate i guess um the, there's somebody giving him like uh, uh cases over the over the phone or whatever mm-hmm. and he he looks down <laughs> texting while like, driving have you have you never done this before <laughs> like he had to he's had to have died like 15 times yep, yep. driving his car like this <laughs> but yeah he's texting while driving essentially and his car 
He goes, he, it, there's no way he survives this. It, it looks like no in one In fact, should. like, they have to put so many pins and whatever into his body. Like, I don't even know how it's possible. You wouldn't, you would think like the doctors would be like, what's the point? There's so he, much work involved. Let's just let this one die. It does have a pretty, it, it does have a nice ironic moment when they're, when they're telling him that there was nobody alive who could have, who could have done any better. And he's like, I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, so he goes on this sort of this journey here where he's trying to find a cure. But the problem is, is that a lot of these cures or whatever are experimental. And there's some doctors who just refuse to do it because, it, um, it's just, it's not something that's probably likely to work or whatever. Uh, and this was sort of his, his thing. He wouldn't take on cases that were, that weren't winnable. Mm. Like yeah, he, I think in when he has the wreck, he's trying to choose the most difficult among the cases he's being presented because mm -hmm, he like he yeah, likes a challenge, mm -hmm. right? But he, but he never but he would turn down stuff that he knew was just you know lost cause or whatever. So he now is the lost cause. Um, but he goes on this thing where he basically spends all of his money. He's mm -hmm. he's uh, he's a dick to Rachel McAdams. God, he's such a dick. Oh man. my god. Um, and then he's he's a dick to his physical therapist too. Mm -hmm. But his physical therapist just happens to know somebody who went through something like this, and he's per perfectly fine now. He's casually. I, this is the part of the movie that I don't understand: is how Benjamin Bratt's character has just walked away but still like has the cure within him like he he knows just enough about the wizarding or sorcery or whatever to to maintain his health mm -hmm. but he was able to walk away from the the camartage yeah i get the feeling sequels will probably delve deeper into his story I, he dies at the end of this doesn't he in a, in yeah a there's a scene at the end where mordo the uh chiwetel edufor character uh is he's basically he's turning into a bad guy by the end of it uh he wants to make sure that anybody who has gone against nature gone against the rules of, yeah. the, of the temple and everything he wants them all gone yeah oh, um i by, forgot all about that by the very end of it yeah but you're right he gets to walk away from this temple like oh well you've learned your shit yeah. okay because <laughs> yeah isn't it supposed to be like he's actively somehow actively yeah. magicking so he doesn't yes. have pain yeah he's, that is exactly he's still, what's happening he still has his back broken or something like that yeah yeah it's it, but there's a magic there's i'm no most surprised that benjamin bratt role they didn't cast andy garcia yeah right <laughs> Because he could have been in there minimally and died. <laughs> you imagine Andy Garcia out there playing basketball? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to Tibet and uh, and uh, learned the miracle cure. It was great. That's, um, a, that's a good Andy Garcia. Thank you. Nice. Um, I don't think I've ever heard anybody do Andy Garcia. <laughs> Better than you, you stinking Irish pig. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's from that's good. Untouchables. That's from untouchables. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not just like calling my coworkers. <laughs> no, 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 no. We know. We, we, knew, we knew. We knew. It just wasn't funny. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> no, it is. It's plenty funny. <laughs> funny, funny. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So he finds out about this. He goes and finds Benjamin Bratt playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Benjamin Bratt, as one does. Yeah, Benjamin Bratt is like, uh, yeah, go to this temple in Tibet. So he goes to Tibet, and, and he fight clubs it. Yeah, he fight clubs it because <laughs> he goes right. in. He goes in. He's like, I don't believe in any of this shit. What? This is frustrating to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he knows Benjamin Bratt like is perfectly fine now. Yeah. And then when they're telling him all this shit, they're like, Well, that he's like, that's impossible. <laughs> well, you see proof. Yeah. yeah. And you've it. tried literally everything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've seen proof of it working. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. There's a point where Tilda Swinton like uh like uh puts him through this like mind bending like like a pink floyd laser show yeah 3d yeah, yeah. 3d laser show um and uh by the end of it strange is like oh okay i, I see what you mean but she's like fuck you get yeah. up <laughs> you're too old fat man that's right <laughs> and you you're too fucking blonde <laughs> um you're too old nobody listens to techno uh, <laughs> that's let's right go. now let's go but he does do the waiting thing. They eventually let him in. And because Stephen Strange is a brilliant person, he has no time for this whole, like, I'm going to learn this stuff gradually. He seems like he's, like, not even sleeping. He's 
he's going through all these books and everything. Benedict Wong again, another great character for Benedict mm-hmm. Wong to play mm-hmm. in this one. Uh, uh, I'm playing the character Wong. Yes, of course he is. <laughs> uh, is the sort of the uh, chief librarian or whatever the person who took over after Mads Mikkelsen at the beginning of this movie kills the other chief librarian. And the curious moment here, I'm going to rip out one page yeah. of this book. Yeah. And and then move on. And and there's all this important shit in the book. Why don't <laughs> take the book? No, no. Take the goddamn book. <laughs> Books are heavy. Yeah. yeah. He right. also yeah. doesn't right. he use like an axe to kill the the guy at the beginning or some yeah, sort of actual I think weapon. So. I think like so. he suspends like, him they, in the air. They behead yeah. him, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then something weapons him. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, Smoky eye. Yes. Smoky eye, nice. <laughs> um, but uh, you you get the sense that he's he's learning all the he's going to learn all this stuff. He's learning all this stuff on his own. Mm-hmm. And um, the only thing he sort of has trouble with is this transporting thing. I mm-hmm. believe is the big thing. The, like, the, the bling the, ring, like yeah, the sling op- ring. Doing the little opening the little orange CGI thing in front of him, and and uh, they they eventually get to a point where they tell him you got to do this in 30 seconds or yeah because he's on the mountaintop and yeah. he's going to freeze to death right, right? Yeah. so yeah they, they send him to a mountaintop and then he like he figures it out and everything so from that point forward he's just like just taking in all the information that he can and he's he's going a little bit too far because he's starting to learn about things like the time stone that they have just happens to be there mm-hmm. um and uh and and he's learning about this time stone thing and like and he like sees him shows him with a an apple that's been eaten and he makes it go back to normal very cool yeah one of the coolest scenes in all the mcu i think mm-hmm. just a really really slick visual yeah 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 and um and, and then they tell him you know there's there's problems with doing this because you could get into some endless time loops and and uh you, a lot of different things could go wrong with that and everything but of course we know that we fucking need the time stone now mm-hmm. but uh so the mads mickelson character is cassilius mm-hmm. um, he's my favorite roman emperor he mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. is he had terrific orgies caesar augustus cassilius mm-hmm. declares today orgy day <laughs> <laughs> that's why he was my favorite because he was constantly declaring orgy day always yeah, orgies always. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he, there's three different centers around the world. One's in Hong Kong, one's in New York, and then there's one in London, maybe London. Uh, but he wants to take them over and, and, uh, and, uh, he wants Dormammu, Dormammu, whatever his name Mm -hmm. is. Dormammu. Uh, Dormammu. He wants him to come down and take over the planet. It is London. It's London. I read an interesting story about this quick rabbit hole. I, I have seen in multiple places people telling us that. Doctor Strange takes place during Avengers, Mm -hmm. and that's why the computer would target Stephen Strange. So I googled this movie, and I read two different wiki pages and have found no evidence to support this theory yet. But while reading, I did discover that Ditko and Stan Lee created Dormammu as a name. They never intended to really flush out the character. They just wanted this, like far off evil but the fans were like rabid because they somehow picked a name that just piqued interest huh. and they eventually had to write a whole character interesting um, to feed the fan huh. i just thought that was interesting it is but uh yeah Cassilius's main goal here is to allow dormammu to come down to earth i believe that's how that goes he's mm-hmm. got a, he's got a because these centers are all there to protect what's coming from space mm-hmm. or, or mm-hmm. gods from space or whatever um knocking them down is the first goal of that and then dormammu comes down and takes over the planet and then what profit profit okay right. um, just checking i'm not sure what he wants to do after that but, yeah okay obviously uh strange becomes very very good at what he does and there's a point where he's into bed at one point but then he goes to the new york one mm-hmm. And that's where Cassilius is first, and that's where he first starts, uh, you know, uh, using the very little power that he knows. But the cape, yeah, becomes such a great scene. Yes, the cape becomes part of him at oh, this point. Oh God! I mean, the the action in this scene, because he doesn't quite have a hold of his powers, and he's within this. And it's it's narratively weird because Cassilius should easily kick his ass yeah 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 he's already killed the the leader of the sanctum in new mm-hmm. york yeah but he has a whole hard time with uh with strange but still this scene is fucking awesome yeah, oh yeah it oh, yeah. is <laughs> it is and that, that cape is awesome it's got a lot of good visual gags with it and everything but there is a point in this where um this battle ends up going to he goes to the hospital yeah because he's he's uh 
He stabbed. Yeah, he stabbed, and he tells Rachel McAdams all this stuff, and she, of course, is like, I don't believe this shit and whatever. But uh, there's a point where he's on the operating table, and he take his he takes his own soul out or whatever mm -hmm. to fight this guy, and she sees all this crazy shit. She sees his soul. Mm -hmm. She knows it's there. She knows, like, this isn't one of those things like, like, oh, something weird is happening or whatever. And his body is on the table. It's just, she sees his actual soul. So even after all this big battle and everything, and he tells her that he's doing all this stuff, she's like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, she doesn't yeah. believe it. <laughs> like, she's scully, but like, yeah. <laughs> like scully, like scully, you could reasonably believe what scully, like scully had the skepticism because she didn't really see the real evidence or yeah. whatever. She sees actual evidence in front of her and she's like, no, no, okay, whatever. But then, then he, he transports and then she's, Mm -hmm. sort of resigned to believe it at that point um uh Cassilius wants to then uh, attack the one that's in hong kong mm -hmm. um and this is where the the time stone starts coming into effect and everything he goes to hong kong and like it's already been destroyed but he uses the time stone to, to I love to, that ending yeah. that's a great ending although i don't understand maybe you guys know this how does he become sorcerer supreme well, add sour cream and tomatoes. Mm, mm, that's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly. That's correct. Like, um, uh, I never understood that. Like, it, it's the same issue I had with, this is a weird detour, mm -hmm. John Roberts becoming Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, <laughs> because he was the youngest and most recently appointed. Right. You would think that would go to seniority. Yeah. Strange is, like, by far the newest guy on the block. But yeah. after the Ancient One dies, he becomes... I, burrito I, supreme I, it might be I one of the only one laughing about my taco <laughs> supreme joke god damn it that was funnier than that respect <laughs> um like uh i don't have any good answers for you it's yeah, funny it's funny do they call him that in this movie um uh, maybe it's not, just that everybody else higher up has died doesn't the ancient one die by the by the well no mordo's there um <clears throat> wong is there mordo is there yeah, they, they, I don't know. They, there's, I think there's at this point maybe so many have died that, and he's good. He's awesome. Oh, by I, the I end. agree. Maybe I mean, he should be choosing him or something. It's maybe? a cloak. I'm sorry, you guys called it cape before. Every no, said no, the no. I, isn't there a joke in there where he says it's yes. a cloak and somebody uh, refers to it as yeah, a cape? I think that's in Infinity War. Is it oh, Infinity is it? War. Yeah, okay, yeah, so know. yeah, it's the cloak. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So he he turns back time and everything and gets the 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 main damage in Hong Kong finished. But Dormammu's still coming. Mm -hmm. uh, so which leads to that awesome ending that you were referring to, yeah. where he decides to go on this endless loop of dying, essentially. Um, so great and he's like i'm here to bargain and uh and dormammu just keeps on killing him in all Still these the fantastic ways <laughs> but at every every time he dies he comes floating over the little thing <laughs> <laughs> and uh and and basically tells him you're my prisoner you're my bitch i can just do this all the i can do this all day all uh, for eternity if i have to until you finally say okay i won't i won't attack earth and uh that's how it happens. yeah mm -hmm. he annoys him to death he annoys basically. him to death yeah and I know, I know we can't show that for very long, otherwise it'll get old. But it seems like Dormammu gives up really pretty easily. Like, hey, yeah. I don't know how many of those timelines are. I don't know. It, I, I think I think they sort of make it where it feels like it had to have gone on longer than what we see. Yeah. Because the I way you were going to say, I don't know. We can't do this every time. But why didn't he even try that shit once with Thanos? Well, it may end up being that because we were talking about how does he see past his own death? He dies a bunch at the end of this, and he's able to to see past that mm -hmm. is he yeah i mean that's how he makes his decision he's like okay here's a here's an outcome that would make sense but i also i also wonder if it if the death that that tilda swinton is referring to that she could never get past this one point when they're in the hospital and mm -hmm. she's they're looking at that lightning going mm -hmm. across the sky and everything i wonder if that is what would be referred to as the final death there's no way there's no hope of getting her back whereas strange is maybe seen past his death because there are scenarios in which he right. becomes yeah, yeah. alive again mm -hmm. so that's why i always that's the way i always interpret that but you know mm -hmm. they're fudging things as they go mm -hmm. my point um, is the mcu is probably not going to be allowed to annoy any other villains to death no <laughs> but no. logic would dictate you would probably try that again just do that every time <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. by the way there's also the delicious uh thing that dormammu was voiced by benedict cumberbatch too oh so. yeah, yeah that was right. his idea actually. yeah that's a really cool thing as well <laughs> i read that again reading that wiki today i learned that and it was like his voice is a 
The character's voice is Benedict Cumberbatch combined with an average British man. <laughs> I'm like, well, who is it? He's got a name, right? Anyway. Martin Freeman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, yeah, the the sort of the the subplot that's sort of been going through this is Mordo's uh, uh, ideas about what you should be able to do and everything, and and he's found out that you know dilda swinton's character has been using some of the dark magic to stay uh her age the whole time mm -hmm. and uh and so like using that and doing the time stone and all that he's like this is not what i signed up for and so yes he he becomes sort of a bad guy by the end of it and that's why at the end he's he kills benjamin bratt and all that um uh, the stan lee cameo is he's a bus passenger i believe there's a part where he's like reading a book on the on the bus oh yeah and it just that's that's pretty much it um i'm trying to think if there was any other in credit scenes in this one yeah thor i think thor's in the end no mid credit Strange. scene strange decides to help thor who has brought his brother loki to earth to okay so that's a thing yeah. for thor ragnarok yes yeah okay uh that it's a, it's an actual scene from yeah. thor ragnarok yeah. that's in there and then the yeah the mordo scene with benjamin brad is at the very end mm. i believe or it's in the middle. I can't remember which one it it's is. It's the last one, though. It's the yeah. last one. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, uh, James Gunn Returns. I think you guys like this movie more than I do. I don't, I don't Oh, really? I don't, I don't, I don't, know, where, I don't know where you get that idea. Do you not like it very much either? No. Yeah, okay. Good. Like, uh, I, when we had Aaron in here, and we were doing the year in, year in review, and we were talking about comic book movies... I even forgot to mention it. Like, oh, actually, I think I just said, well, we're not going to include Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in the best of this year, right? Because we got Spider-Man Homecoming. We got a whole bunch of... He's like, well, I think I would disagree with you on the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Volume yeah. 2. That's a this is a movie that I have watched twice, I guess. Mm -hmm. three No, three times. I've seen it three times. Um, each time, it's like it starts off great. I'm fine with it. And then I hate how every bit of this ends. Yeah. Yeah. And it it's not as fun to me, the whole thing. And Do you buy the Yondu stuff, like the emotional impact and all no. that stuff? You know, mm. it's right on the the cusp for me because it it's so pronounced at here's, the end. Here's here's the here's the problem. I do I do mm. believe in that. Uh the problem is is it's been two movies. The first movie he was just chasing after him the whole time and just being angry at him the mm -hmm. whole time. We never saw them building a relationship exactly. before that and uh so like it's it's not like i mean i i understand we need that sort of as a direction to go because he needs yondu by the end of it mm -hmm. man i saw people after this movie talking about how they were crying yeah. when yondu dies and i was like what the fuck for yeah. yeah he like i mean so star lord saw him as a father figure and there's some emotional connection fine dude was still a captive yeah. of this guy <laughs> yeah, exactly. for his whole life. He's basically a slave. Mm -hmm. And didn't you just find out Yondu actually cared about him like 15 minutes ago <laughs> yeah, in the movie? Exactly. How are you tearing up right now? Yeah. I just don't understand. I think some people go into movies ready to cry. Mm. But uh, this one starts off with the uh, the scene where uh, they're battling this big like alien thing that's about wow. to steal their batteries or whatever. This this the sovereign is this is this group's name. We never really get an idea of what the beast is coming down for. I mean, because they need to protect the batteries, I guess. Yep. Um, and it and it leads to a curious moment that, like, why did they hire the Guardians of the Galaxy when they have all this simulated? Yeah, they, like, they don't no, even have to, you know, sacrifice themselves. Right. Nobody has to die here unless they've tried it before, and because this guy, this beast's skin is so tough. They can't get into it, but I don't know how they expect Guardians of the Galaxy to do the same thing. It's sort of like just sort of glossed over, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Well, but and it's one of these things where I just feel like we get a bit too much of this where the actual battle is fuzzy in the background because Baby Groot is being mm -hmm. cute in the foreground. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember this movie specifically doing this in at least two scenes where they're, we're supposed to chuckle at the foreground and just yada yada the battle going on in the background and i think that really is as a trick you should only use once well it's that in that that opening scene while adorable goes on yes. and on for the entirety of the credits yeah and it's like okay yeah, yeah. it's cute well, it's adorable and they ultimately find uh 
you know, they ultimately find a weakness. I've never understood this either. They they find like a little scar that's on him, like a a wound of some sort, and then they're able to, to use that wound to just slice him completely open. Yep. I was like, isn't the skin still impossible to to cut at that point? Like, yeah, I know it's got a he's got a gash there, but like, how does a sword go in and just just slice him up mm-hmm. from that? But anyway, n- neither here nor there. They win. <laughs> Uh, the sovereign is basically exchanging, I guess, money, and they're also exchanging um, Nebula. Mm-hmm. They're exchanging Nebula back, so Nebula is their prisoner now. Uh, Rocket decides to steal the batteries. The fuck is up with that, yeah. man? I mean, okay, we've—he's <laughs> a rascal, we know. Yeah, but stealing the fucking batteries, like the only thing that they were trying to protect. Yeah, and not expecting these motherfuckers to come after you. Yeah, I, oh. yeah, I know stupid character needs to be from here over there let's come up with a reason yeah yeah Yeah. so they uh as they as soon as they are about to fly away sovereign go get in their simulated spaceships ah yes (laughs) and uh and go after them and they are saved by a literal deus ex machina (laughs) in ego Mm. um nothing nothing really subtle about this movie no no (laughs) although i was told that we were using by somebody who has never answered me, by the way, <laughs> that we were using Deus Ex Machina wrong, which I disagree with, by the way. I've seen that a few different times, but I think it's just people who see a sin in a video where we say something Ex Machina and they don't make the connection, so they think we don't understand. Mm-hmm. And the there's actual... other times that we've stretched the definition Absolutely. of it, too. So, mm-hmm. like, it's, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't I don't really give a shit about that. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but anyway, that's a clear deus ex machina. Yeah. They're about to die. And then just randomly, oh, it's Peter Quill's father. So they, cr- they go to the, they go to this planet. I don't know if they crash there. I guess they, cr- they, they do crash there because, mm. because, He's uh, gotta spray fix the ship. Yeah. They have to spray fix the ship <laughs> and Drax is like, Drax is like hanging on the outside of the ship and like, oh, we should do that again. Even yeah. though he should have died like a million times. Yeah. Um, but, uh, they're on this planet and they're just sort of like, they're trying to, they're trying to, uh, um, fix the ship and everything. But then ego comes down. Kurt Russell comes down and says, uh, Peter, I'm your father. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I want you to see this planet that I have for you and everything. So he takes him and he takes, uh, Gamora and he takes, uh, Drax mm-hmm. all to this ego planet while rocket and everybody else stays by, stays behind to fix the ship. While they're there, they remember in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, Yondu put a little transmitter thing on the ship. So he comes after them. Rocket kills like a whole bunch of guys, but still not enough to. It's a great scene. It though. is a great that's, scene. That's an awesome scene. Yeah. It just, it, that's where him being a rascal pays off yes. because he's just cracking up and hitting this button over yeah. and over yeah. and over. Again. <laughs> you, know, you see all the guys flying up in the air and then another group of guys flying up in the it's air. So great. And, uh, but, uh, Here's some, by the way, they, they do so much with baby Groot on this that just makes no sense to me. By the end of this, they can't even get him to know which button to press on a bomb. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Nebula is able to tell him, you need to free me so that I can help you out. Yep. He knows what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, know. I don't know. He could, I mean, he's, he's pretty whippy and violent. He's basically a ninja badass in the one or two scenes of this movie that want him to be mm-hmm. with his limbs that become very plastic manny. Uh, but in the other, well, every, everywhere else, he's basically stupid and useless. Mm-hmm. And they, it's like they wanted their Groot and ate it too. I don't know. <laughs> um, so when uh, Yondu shows up and and uh, tell and, and he's, he tells them that well we're gonna get a big bounty from the sovereign if we take you in and everything, he uh, instead says well. Why should we, I, I've never been the type of guy who's, you know, held to my word or whatever. So why don't we just take the batteries instead, which is far less money, but apparently he's not told his other crew about yeah, this yeah. until right then and there. He's got to know that that's not going to fly with them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, Nebula comes in and actually, uh, helps with the mutiny essentially mm-hmm. that occurs right after that. Like after he says, we're going to take the batteries and not you as, they end up taking everything and Yondu prisoner and get on the, get on board their ship and they're going to go back to the sovereign and they're going to get all the stuff mm-hmm. back for whatever. Um, 
This is Taser Face, right? Taser Face! <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, Taser Face is sort of the, uh, he's, he's, he's sort of saying he's the leader, but I don't know if there's anybody really truly believes he is. Yeah. For, and I, I guess mean, they all the, sleep on the same I guess floor. That's the point. Well, that's a yeah, thing, man. There's, there's a, a thing in these movies. <laughs> there is a whole prison break thing here too. So you have Yondu and Rocket who are behind bars, but the meanwhile they they're sitting there like uh, torturing Baby Groot or making him drink or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they all end up passing out and and sleeping on the same floor, like yes. we always bring up. Yes. Um, and then Groot just shows up and and by the jail cell, and they're like, uh, "Could you get?" this one like i can only imagine how hard it is to describe whatever yondu's little yeah. mohawk thing is that <laughs> controls his arrow especially to baby group but still again like this is one of those things where Groot can say things to rocket and rocket can understand what he says but rocket can't come back in Groot and say you know <clears throat> i am Groot. Yeah. i am Groot. it's another it's Groot. another joke that goes on for what i think is way too long yeah it does like he brings back he's like bringing six back different the wrong things thing. But then it does lead to another great scene that that flying arrow. Scene. That is a great scene and might be the best scene of the movie. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because he goes through and it's just that arrow is just sitting there, just and you know, all these these raining bodies are coming <laughs> down through the ship and everything. Um, so they escape the ship in another little escape pod thing, and the uh, the ship the other part of the ship is either self destructing or they put a bomb on it or so, i can't remember what they did but it's in flames by mm. the time taser face comes over and tells the sovereign by the way uh they've escaped but here are the coordinates i never will understand this yeah. they they give them the coordinates of the ship where it is at that moment but then after that remember rocket yondu and all them go through whatever how many portals it yeah, is yeah. And it's like so many portals that like even even two of them is is damaging to the human body or whatever. And yet another scene that goes on for two that's funny. Yeah, that the whole crazy face and all that stuff. Yeah. But then it goes on for like another few seconds. It's like man, I don't know how long this movie is, but it's it's too long for it's, a its content. Two hours, I think. Uh, so and so now we're in this meanwhile stage. Meanwhile, <laughs> at the ego planet um kurt russell is so attractive he is god damn i know I'd fuck him. he's good looking and, in this movie and I, I like i do like they they really did a good job getting him to 1980 kurt russell i don't know how they're doing this because tony St robert downey jr in the previous movie was pitch perfect mm -hmm. he's pitch perfect in this movie i don't know what they're yeah, doing I don't know about the downey one the downey one is a little uncanny valley for me but this the one the kurt russell one mm -hmm. uh, I, I've under, I, I understand that they apparently spent a ungodly amount of time on getting Kurt Russell just right in the 1980 portion of this and whatever. Let's go behind Dairy Queen and fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Ego is trying to tell Peter that he, you know, he has been looking for this for, for him for a very long time. He's finally found his son and everything. We of course know that later that he has has been populating, you know, all over the place. He's been uh, breeding all over the place, and none of those kids had the god gene or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Uh, and all of them have been taken to his planet, and he's just killed them all once they found once he finds out that they're not gods. This is as good a time as any in life to tell you about an encounter I had with my wife in the car the other day, where. <laughs> Ordinarily, I would say, awesome, and ask for a high five, but instead, I decided to gesture as though I was shooting my sperm out all over the world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, <laughs> yes. I don't know why, and in fact, we quickly started breaking down how this happened, because she was like, that's too far, and I was like, yeah, I don't know why I thought that would be very funny, mm -hmm. but that was this guy. That was Ego out yeah. in space going, yeah. wherever you land, make some babies. Yeah. Anyway. It is a, there is a funny moment when you when they're finding out the truth and everything because he has these like uh 3d model monitor things that uh -huh. are showing showing him in the same red leather jacket that yeah, he's yeah. in and every in every like he's like with a like a super ridiculous tentacled alien in this red <laughs> leather jacket and everything so every single one of these uh parts where he shows like well i've been like trying to do this everywhere it's like all these different kind of aliens with him in the red leather jacket That's right. um but uh yeah, so it's unbeknownst to him. So for the whole time, he's basically saying, Peter, you're a god. You're going to be able to learn how to do all sorts of cool shit while you're on this planet. 
we haven't figured out yet and i'm guessing that they're going to come up with uh, something for peter at some point uh whether or not ego the ego planet is the source of any power he has or whether or not they can say oh he, he's got he's like thor and he mm. can you know find something within himself that's just you know that's just always there mm-hmm. so we don't know yet but anyway that's all the, the whole thing on the planet is them just i mean this is where it becomes almost a slog for me fucking drags man it takes forever for all this stuff to happen there's two different stories going on but we don't know kurt russell is evil yet mm. i mean you kind of know he yeah. is but it they, they we haven't got we don't get the evil plan until much later and uh it's through this um is uh what is, is it mantis they're calling they call mm-hmm. her yeah, it's yeah. through that it's through her that we know <laughs> caterpillar girl caterpillar girl <laughs> it's through her that we know that because she keeps trying to tell drax and then this is another just annoying thing she's about to tell him everything like the first day and then gamora shows up out of nowhere behind him and she's like oh well i better not say anything mm-hmm so it, it makes it go on for yeah. even longer yeah. and everything but then they find out they're okay there's this plot and then so ego uh ego's trying to with peter he's like well with with us together we can just dominate the universe and everything so he like gets control of peter and like while he's doing this control thing he's like it really uh really upset me when i had to put, had to put that cancer in your mom i know what right? the fuck yeah i know, I know. what the fuck yep. why did you do that yep why <laughs> for the why? audience <laughs> for the audience why and of course peter reacts just like tony does yep and and uh fucking bruce wayne <laughs> <laughs> why you say martha um uh, and, and then it devolves into punching and kicking yeah there's between a whole, gods and demigods so so here's the there's this is why the ending is just uh it just takes so long they go they go down to the ego planet they're gonna bomb the, the very center of it or mm-hmm. whatever and it, and it requires Groot to go down there with this bomb and remember to t- push the right button and, and everything uh, meanwhile, the sovereign comes down. They found the planet somehow, yep. even though the coordinates were in the middle of fucking space. Mm-hmm. Um, they come down. They're angry at Peter. They're wanting to, you know, they inflict themselves into this batter, battle. Uh, and yeah, you have three things going on. Sovereign's fighting. You have Peter fighting ego. You got a uh, group trying to put the bomb on. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, put the bomb on. Yeah. Put the bomb on. <laughs> put the bomb the bomb on. on. <laughs> you know what a bomb does, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh there it seems like all is lost. It seems like all is lost. But Yandu comes down and saves the day. And like Yandu, uh before before he goes down, asks Rocket, Do you have a thing that can breathe in space? And do you have a couple of these items? He's like, I've only got one of each. Basically, Yandu's gonna sacrifice himself mm-hmm. to save Peter. And uh, so Yandu comes down and has a thing that flies, helps them fly out of the planet, but he only has one thing to help him breathe out in space. So that's where the big touching. He did. Yandu. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a little subplot, too, with Sylvester Stallone and all the other Ravagers. Saying, yeah. You used a kid. You know, <laughs> you used a kid. That's, you, that's against the code. Oh, thank Which you. you. You know, you go around stealing a whole bunch of people's shit. Which probably affects children, by the way. Yeah. But you have a thing about not using children for your, yeah. It's one of those things. You used a kid. (laughs) And, uh, because Rocket radios to him, tells him all the great things that Yondu did, he gets his funeral in the sky with the fireworks. (laughs) Another thing, I, I know I keep harping on this, but that takes so long. Yeah. That's why I guess I don't get the emotional weight of this. Yes. Okay. We, we, just like Jeremy said. We know that he cares about him, but we don't need this long, drawn-out funeral sequence for this character that, you know, was forgettable. Honestly. Yeah. So, let's see. The end credit scene here is... Um, scene just after the title card shows Craglin, Sean Gunn character, practicing with Yondu's arrow-controlling headgear thing. Uh, accidentally sends an arrow into Drax. Mm-hmm. Um, mid credit scene shows Sylvester Stallone getting together with an old crew, and we see Ving Rhames, Michelle Yeoh, Michael Rosenbaum, and a voice from Miley Cyrus on one of the CGI characters. Mm. It's Miley, and yeah, that was a and that was a thing. Like there was this like, well, I guess there might be a Ravagers movie now, mm-hmm. but they still haven't figured that any of that. Is out. that like a spinoff comic? Even it kind of feels like it might be if the way they're 
kind of setting that all up. Yeah, mm-hmm. it could be. I don't think they've. I mean, with all those names and everything, it seems like you could could come up with a pretty good movie out of it. But I like Miley. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> CGI Miley. I got no. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she can be playing a dude. Uh, this Miley. is the one that has the most credit scenes. There's so many. Oh, this um, is the one that has like four or five, yeah, right? Yeah, there's another one where it shows a now teenage group being moody and Peter sort of playing a surrogate father. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another one, this is the one that a lot of people uh, are speculating might uh, factor into Avengers later is uh, the uh, sovereign leader is explaining a new technological wonder known as Adam. Mm. And Adam is apparently, I think in the comic books, a uh, character that ends up killing Thanos in oh, wow. in in the comics. Sweetness. Hmm. But I don't know if that's what they're going to end up doing here. I mean, we got Captain Marvel coming in. Of course, that's more space uh people, more yeah. mm-hmm. more more space more people. Space people. Right. Um I'm telling you, man, if you st- if you tell a space story in this universe, you got to you got to pare it down, man. The best ones are the ones that are just focused on a particular thing like guardians one and even thor to a certain extent mm-hmm. thor ragnarok that kind of thing just keep it keep it straightforward you don't have to have all these other diversions yeah, yeah i don't i've said this before and i don't i just i don't blame anybody that's like into that stuff because i know there's people out there like more space the better for me man and i'm just let's i connect to it less and less mm-hmm. because you still want the stakes you had on earth but it's space Mm -hmm. and everything is whatever you say it is Mm -hmm. (laughs) right like kurt russell's been looking for him for forever but he only found him in this movie (laughs) yeah yep yep that was fortunate yeah Yeah. exactly (laughs) um and uh one more scene one more scene at the end shows the watchers walking away from stan lee as he gives them information a lot of people have decided that stan lee is playing (laughs) is it the watcher yeah i think so i don't fucking care yeah like the uh, like all the reasons why we've seen him everywhere in all these movies is because he's the watcher mm-hmm. and he's because there's a point in the active. middle of, there's a bill in the mi- middle where the actual cameo shows up where he's like and then i was a fedex uh yeah. delivery man and blah 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 <laughs> um so yeah there's uh there's guardians of the galaxy 2 we started off saying we love this phase. We hate two of the movies so <laughs> but far. But it's going to get better it, any movie. It's going to get better. Spider-Man right Homecoming yeah. is the, the next, next one. one. Yeah. Oh, this is my baby. <laughs> like, I know that Captain Marvel is uh, probably, like from what I've read, one of the most powerful heroes in the Marvel Universe in the comics and is being positioned to anchor, to be the Tony Stark, if you will, of the next few phases, the anchor of whatever this MCU becomes. And that's probably fitting. For a bunch of different reasons, Brie Larson's awesome. Mm-hmm. But man, I hope Spider Man is like the co anchor. Yeah. Because of all of the times that they have cast perfectly, uh, they've never done it more perfectly than Tom Holland as Spider Man. And they went through uh, like a lot of candidates to get to him, didn't they? Oh, they was... did. Like, I just saw a headline the other day that Chandler Riggs, the kid from Walking Dead, was one of the hundreds of kids that auditioned for this movie. And that's a pretty famous guy. Well, yeah, and Naza Butterfield, right? Or oh, yeah. Asa he Black actually made it pretty far, I think. Yeah. Um, and he would have been great, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but Tom Holland's fucking perfect, man. There's a magic here. Um, and it's a flawed movie. Yeah. Like, I've got issues. We talked about it in the Sins video. We talked about it in the mini pod review we did of the movie. I just, they fade. Every time I watch this, they fade further into the background. And the stuff that I love just grows more and more prominent. Mm-hmm. Uh, fucking Ned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really think Ned may be the best character in all of the MCU. He's, he's so great. And then you could argue that Marvel solved its, or started to solve its villain problem in this movie. Yeah, I think you could. Ultimately, Vulture doesn't mean shit to the MCU, right? Like well, he probably general, no. well, uh, Sinister Six uh, implications, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, okay, so maybe he does. But but Michael Keaton is so great in this movie because he's got a motivation. He's believable. Yes, it's ridiculous that he's he's Spider Man's girlfriend's dad, but also we get that fucking scene in the car. Yeah. 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 So man, well, and his it's motivation so is, it's so, I mean, we, we're dealing with the fantastical. He's taking these alien artifacts from all these battles. The Avengers have had, and he's turning them into weapons and selling them on the black market. But the idea that the government came in and took his main source of revenue, because mm-hmm. he was the con- he was contracted to clean up those areas. And Tony Stark built his own company to do that. Yeah. And they swooped in and stole his contract. That's a believable anger. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's a, that, t- that taps into a, a feeling that I think a lot of Americans feel. 
that mm-hmm. the government has taken away something. Although I do, I did have questions about why New York City was like here. A uh, random company that uh, <laughs> that uh, wants to clean stuff up after an alien attack, do it, <laughs> and then and, and like nobody from the Avengers or the government or anything <laughs> yeah. said, oh, hold on, just for a second. <laughs> There's some alien artifacts that we we'll <laughs> want to clean up out of this because yeah, did they even have like auditions or interviews? Or yeah, did they just give it to the first company that volunteered. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm, I, why, the 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 uh, I guess the thing that he michael keaton says is that you know he pretty much sold all went all in on this basically probably underbid everybody and got all this equipment and everything because he knew he was going to get a big job uh this is another one of those where the timeline seems a little yep. off yeah does and we the, did the math on it too and we did the sins video it was yeah like, no because no, this happens on. right after the avengers which we're told is 2012 but uh, then it's eight well, years it later. Well, it opens right? right after the Avengers. Right. Because he's cleaning up. But then it does jump ahead like eight years. Yeah, then it goes eight years. But even that doesn't end up ultimately jiving too much with the other timelines. Mm-hmm. I get a little confused with the whole moving day thing because it's this movie where apparently he's officially moving up to that headquarters. But they've been there But they've forever. been there for two or three movies mm-hmm. already. That's the place that Ant-Man breaks into and yeah, Falcon catches and Spider-Man him. has already been in Civil War, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then the, this movie begins right after that. Mm-hmm. He, it's a sort of a found footage type of thing almost. Cause it's pretty he's, cute. He's shooting all this video and everything. Uh, it was another thing that that was crazy to me because Tony sort of like uh, takes him back home and everything. But remember, at the end of Civil War, he's he he has to go back to the prison and he's got all this stuff that he's got to do and. I guess after Peter was done, like he still was hanging out where he had, where he, I don't know. It's, it's, it's argumentative, but like, uh, it, it feels like Tony f- straight off of this, like, devastating battle is like he's back to being old tony again yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like an india at some cocktail party driving yeah. like a three hundred thousand dollars sports car like um but thank god this movie is so lighthearted, and it's even more lighthearted than Guardians Two mm-hmm. because they they were so they were getting so heavy with Civil War and all this stuff. Yeah, and going down that road, and even Ultron too. Mm-hmm. It was just this like murkiness and this mm-hmm. slog, and now they really went for straight up comedy. They did uh, for this, and they they fucking nailed it. Yeah, man. they really did, and that's why I joke when people were saying Ragnarok is the funniest MCU movie ever. I'm like, you're all you're sleeping on how much comedy is in Spider Man Homecoming. Oh yeah, and it's all over the place. It's what makes him so great in that role. It's like when he's when he's trapped in the truck, the mm-hmm. security truck with all the knickknacks that vulture was trying to steal and he's like pulling him out and he pulls out like ultron's face yeah. his skull and he's yeah. like that's awesome and yeah. slits on the side. Yeah. or when he's doing the shocker fight with the buses and he's underneath and sees all the gum on the seats and he's like gross yeah. like he's he's a real teenager <laughs> saying the shit a real teenager would say in those circumstances and I, i'm in love man and they cast him young enough that he can be that way for another several movies, still young and learning before he has to turn into some sort of wise mentor. And there's still a lot of great material in that Spider-Man as mm-hmm. well. Um, I am a little concerned. I saw a headline yesterday that Donald Glover is in talks to, for a role in Black Panther 2. Interesting. But Donald Glover is like totally in Spider-Man Homecoming mm-hmm. and even is playing the uncle of Miles Morales, who is the new Spider-Man in the comics. Uh, at least that's the implication of his oh, scene. Really? I got a nephew that lives in this neighborhood. I don't like ah. those guns. And I think his character's name is something Morales. Huh. Um, and when Peter Parker retired in the comics, Miles Morales became the new Spider-Man. Ah. And so he's pretty heavily in the MCU already. And I think we've talked about that. It's like the only one other actor that's played two different roles in the MCU, maybe. I well, I mean in different uh, with different studios so they so they've never really been able to say that they're they're, it's not the mcu like for instance uh tim blake nelson was in fantastic four okay and 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 then he was in hulk but those movies are are not even related because they're the fantastic four isn't part of this universe yet and the same goes for chris evans as you know oh yeah and donald glover is aaron davis is his name in the the movie but he is the uncle of miles morales okay so i wasn't wrong but i was wrong correct so this is at the end of civil war (laughs) and uh and spider-man uh he 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 wants to do stuff this is his thing he had he wants to um 
he wants to be in the action and everything and he's getting i mean you know after doing something with the avengers and everything doing all this like keeping people from stealing cars and saving people out of burning buildings and all that does that make sense by the way boring yeah does that make sense like tony's muzzling of him well after using him for it makes sense narratively because mm. in this movie, we want him to want to break out. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's the only reason it makes sense to have had him in Civil War. It still makes no sense that Tony would have brought him over there and endangered his life. And then gone back to, and no, you immediately but then, shut him down. But then maybe never told him that, you know, hey, you know, the Avengers are only called for when it's like a huge thing, you know, when we need to make a lot of money. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And so, you know, go about doing your own your own thing. But I think Tony even doesn't want him to do even the small stuff. He wants it. Yeah, he doesn't want him to fuck with Vulture at all. Like, yeah, even though I mean, I guess that's not small. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, 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 I guess he's okay with him doing all the like, you know, the small stuff, the real small stuff. But I don't know. Um, this is a good. This is a a a good arc for this movie though, because once um once ned figures out that he's spider-man which is a great scene oh yeah such oh, yeah. a great scene because he comes crawling in <laughs> on the ceiling he's so, he's so hard on that death star <laughs> 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 <He's robbed. laughs> ned ned's like you've got to tell everybody about this because this is what high school kids <laughs> yeah, would want to do look i'm a badass i can get the hottest girl in school if i want to <laughs> yep. so uh there's a a sort of a, I guess a Buffy the Vampire Slayer almost feel yeah. here, where it's he's trying to do, you know, the normal things in high school, but he he's you know he's got this alter ego that he can't tell anybody about, yeah, and he's got to like put a lid on Ned because Ned just like just almost nearly blurts it out. Yeah, there's a point where they're in a gym and he's like, Peter, no Spider Man, <laughs> <laughs> because the. Uh, the the super hot uh liz character is saying how much she likes uh spider-man and they're like "Ooh, spider-man he's probably gross you know that that. is crazy so this was her film debut was it uh i just saw her in something else laura harrier yeah she was in something recently i can't remember looking at it fahrenheit 451 oh uh, yeah okay did not enjoy it yeah sorry (laughs) (laughs) oh she's also in black klansman oh that's 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 what i'm thinking of but Uh, i haven't seen that movie obviously right because Ned wants to show that Peter is Spider-Man, or at least knows Spider-Man, they go to this party, and the and Peter is going to dress up as Spider-Man and show up, and and you know everybody's going to be cool because Ned knows him, Peter mm. knows him, and he's got but, a hat. But while he's on the roof, yep, the bad guys are just playing with their bad weapons. <laughs> he can see this from the roof, yeah, like yeah. a big blue explosion of some sort. <laughs> shows up and he's like oh what the fuck is that so it does lead a pretty funny scene where he's trying to get there he doesn't have any buildings to swing across right it's like he's shooting webs <laughs> and there's like he's just down in the middle of open space at one point he's like running through a golf course or yeah, something. yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah the reason I, I never understood this uh so this is where donald glover shows up and he's just a guy who wants something for some you know basic crime like not like it's just guns or whatever but he's found the 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 one outfit that sells alien weapons Mm -hmm. doesn't even say in this scene i don't want to kill people he does (laughs) and and a regular gun dealer (laughs) yeah and and, but they've got all this like just like advanced weaponry and everything Uh, you know whatever gets your movie going i guess um so now Peter knows that there's like, okay, there's a big plot afoot and mm-hmm. I need to figure out what's going on with mm-hmm. that. And so, yeah, of course, uh, so Peter calls Happy and tries to tell him about these weapons because uh, uh, he'd already seen them rob the ATM thing, mm-hmm. um, the the fake Avengers, yeah. um, and blow up the deli he likes that makes the good sandwiches. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the next thing is after this. Well, though. it's DC comes comes after that uh, pretty pretty quickly because yeah. they're on the quiz team and they're going to DC for this big meet. And of course, Peter. Well, there's a is there's in between a truck that's gonna have that has all these weapons on the back of it or whatever that they're going to they're gonna steal stuff from. And they figured this out, and I can't remember did did Peter put a tracker or something? I can't remember what it was. How he found out that they were gonna go after this truck? Uh, his suit did his suit yeah. did that's right his suit which is now of course tony stark 
weaponized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After Ned hacks it in yeah, the hotel. Yeah, yeah, which it has, a, has all these, like, new features on it and everything. And um, they they know this is happening in Maryland or something like that. Yeah. So there just so happens to be an academic decathlon that – Peter's a part of this group that's happening in D.C. It's like, well, that's close enough. I love that beat, though, where he comes running up and Flash is like, you can't just come walking up and be welcome back like nothing ever happened. And the teacher comes walking up. the Welcome back, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Flash, you're now alternate. Martin Starr, who's playing, oh, uh, right. yeah, playing yeah. a little bit. of like we, we know him so much from Silicon Valley yeah. at this point that it's fun to see him yeah. like not be that. You know, <laughs> yeah. he's got a couple. Like, actually, he's got three great beats in this. That's one of them. And then the, the part where. He asks Mary, MJ, mm -hmm. uh, we don't know her name is MJ, why she doesn't go up. And she's like, I don't want to celebrate something that was built by slaves. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm sure it wasn't built by. And the security guard's like, eh, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, when he's interviewed on the school television, where he's like, I, I don't, don't want to, never want to lose a student on a school trip. Not again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, of course, uh, of course, Peter like goes after the truck and he, and, uh, and he thinks he can do this and get back to the decathlon, but of course he gets trapped inside, inside of the truck and he gets wheeled into this big top secret facility that's got like, uh, which looks you, way bigger than it should be. Yeah. How is there this much shit mm -hmm. from Tony's suits and like all the shit? Happy's gonna rattle off yeah. from the building that they have yet to even load into mm -hmm. the plane. Like this is warehouse is way too fucking big. Yeah, and Peter's sort of learning his suit and trying to figure out a lot of things. And there's a point where he's like, he's like, oh my god, how long has it been? It's like 23 minutes. Or something <laughs> like this. 37 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> 37 minutes. That's crazy. <laughs> but he ends up like uh, sort of hacking the uh, the door that yeah. is locking him in. He's Good reminder that Peter's really super smart. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but, uh, this is just enough to get him to miss this decathlon thing. But, uh, after all that, the kids get in the Washington Monument and there's a piece of that tech mm -hmm. that the, that the bad guys know where they know where it is. And they, was it going to explode? Yeah. It's that the, he learned while he was in with the suit lady in the warehouse, Karen, suit <laughs> lady, um, that that thing was if it got exposed to radiation. Right. Mm -hmm. So they go through and the so he's detector. trying to call Ned, but Ned has to put his phone in the thing so he can go through yeah. the radiation, right. the x-ray detector. And that's what triggers this catastrophe once they get on the elevator. Um, so he still has to stay in, in Spider-Man form. Yeah. Uh, and climb the Washington Monument, which I swear this movie inflates the height. Yeah. Like when he's trying to run up it, this movie makes it seem like it's 5,000 feet tall. Right. Yeah. And it's really, it's not that big. It yeah. is big. I wouldn't want to stand on top of it, but anyway. And I also thought we made fun of it in the Sins video about how she makes that comment about, yeah, a fall from this height would kill you. Um, but later he falls from a higher height into the water. But mm -hmm. he's got like how many 500 different web options that Tony has like programmed into this mm -hmm. suit. And not one of them was like safety net web. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> like he can make grenade webs and ricochet webs and all these other webs, but not one was this, like, like a safety net or yeah. a parachute web. <laughs> no, I don't know. No. I do like the action in this uh, scene, though. It's great because the cops don't know what to make of him. He's not known as a good or bad guy, so they're trying to arrest him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's stakes enough because his best friend and the girl he has a crush on are about to die, and he's still learning how to use his powers. That whole thing about where he where he flips out and flies over the helicopter and shoots the rung underneath it to spin it, to get enough momentum to go through the window. That's all just spontaneous learning yeah. as he's get doing it. And I think that's one of the things that makes this movie so thrilling is that we're getting to see him, much like we did with Tony in the first Iron Man, mm -hmm. we're getting to see him try and not be 100% successful. Even Which is cool because scene, it's not necessarily an origin story. No, no, yeah. it's really not. But even in this scene, he saves the day. And then the web breaks and they all start falling right. again. And, you know, it's just, it's not perfect. He hasn't mm -hmm. nailed it all quite down yet. Yeah. Yep. So Tony does show up per periodically in this movie. The first, I think after the, the weapons deal happens, he gets, that's where he gets thrown into the water. Yep. And then Tony sends that autonomous suit yep. over. And then the law, the Staten Island ferry thing happens. Yep. Where he, again, he's been trying to contact Happy and Happy doesn't 
ever respond like what is he supposed to do about this vulture thing is mm-hmm. he supposed to just let it happen whatever and they're not giving him any direction so he has to go out and do this it would be a lot stuff. easier if tony would have had happy say all right tony knows about these guys and he's called the fbi exactly yeah. go back to school exactly. and study geometry me, yeah it's it's like the poe plan with holdo in, in really last is. jedi where just fucking tell him yeah they've got this covered it's cool you do whatever it is that you yeah. need to do but we've got this. But instead, it's always like, you know, Tony's just so disappointed in Peter and just like, why are you doing this? And I don't want you to die and all that. So what are we supposed to do about this fucking vulture? <laughs> um, it's also got Nacho in that scene from, oh, uh, it does. from Better Call Saul. It Song. does. Better Call Saul. Yeah. yeah. Better so, Call uh, Song. so yeah, the whole stuff. I do not like the, the action in this scene. I by don't the way. either. I don't. I, like, it, this is one of these. Okay, so the, the Staten Island Ferry ends up like after, after all the shit goes down, it starts splitting in half. Mm-hmm. And there's a point where, uh, he goes through and he spins all these different webs to try to get it back together, but it, it's too heavy and it's, and it starts snapping the webs and everything. Then Tony shows up mm-hmm. in Iron Man suit and everything. And, uh, that leads to him actually showing up this time. Mm-hmm. It's not an autonomous suit, but it's funny. There's a guy on the boat who's like, yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> and then the thing starts snapping and everything. Then Iron Man comes in and starts welding everything yep. back together. Yeah. Yeah. Iron Man! <laughs> yeah. yeah Judas. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Again, I mentioned this before, but I like that this is all Peter's fault because if he doesn't do anything, it's just an arms deal. Yeah. No one's life is in danger. Mm, yeah. No one's going to get killed. Vulture isn't going to have to put on his wings and turn on that. It's all because Peter shows up and tries to stop it with basically violence mm-hmm. that leads to the chain reaction that almost kills everyone on that ferry. Yep. So to to an extent, Tony's righteous in his anger. By the way, his anger here plays way more authentically than his anger at Cap in Civil exactly. War. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, because, again, there were real lives at stake and a stupid decision was made that needs to be shot. He takes the suit back. Mm-hmm. Now, we all know he's going to get it back eventually. Once he takes the suit from Peter, and Peter shows up in the I Love New York t-shirt or whatever and says he lost the internship, you can pretty much write the rest of this movie. Mm-hmm. But it's still so much fun yep. that I don't care because we have yet... It goes really fast from this point because he, he gets sad and tells Aunt May I lost the... Uh, internship. She never presses him on that. Gets mm-hmm. off free again. But that goes right into Teach Me How to Dance because I've mm-hmm. asked Liz to the dance because Liz, most popular girl in school whose dad has all the monies, has waited. She's been so busy planning <laughs> yeah. the homecoming dance that she hasn't even thought about asking she's been, or having a she's date. She's been so busy planning that everybody else has forgotten to yeah. ask her out. Yeah, that's such a <laughs> stupid goddamn moment. I don't know why he couldn't have asked her out way before Right. And this is just a commitment he has to fulfill anyway. But (laughs) and it does lead to coincidence, dad. Yeah. Which I I want to applaud the movie for so casually giving us an interracial family and not making a big deal out of it. But I want to chastise the movie for kind of cheating and using that to trick us into never believing that guy was going to be her dad. Should I not say that? I mean, I mean, I'm all right with it. I was on board with it from the it is a gigantic coincidence, but it leads to some of the best stuff. And and it, it and it does what? the best spider-man movies do it gives a connection directly between the hero and peter Mm -hmm. um and and so that kicks everything off he can't go into the dance now he knows vulture's gonna do something he gets with ned pieces together what a fucking scene by the way while he's walking through the gym the dance oh yeah Mm -hmm. man that whole sequence from when they get into the car actually when they're uh when they're in the kitchen yeah and then they get into the car because he's Keaton, got a big knife in his hand at one point. Yeah, in the exactly. And fucking Keaton's got the gun on the seat in full view of everybody, yeah. by the way. But still, mm-hmm. but like it, there's just everything gets real in this very kind of you know, funny, fun movie. Shit gets real right there. Yeah. And when he walks through and then shit gets fun again afterwards, uh, there's a couple of moments of like reality in this. Like mm-hmm. when he gets the stuff collapsed on him, all the concrete and everything, he, he like he's crying like he's he is. a scared kid. Mm-hmm. Well, and he realizes I can't maybe I can't do this. Yeah. Maybe I'm not strong enough and it's crushing everything that he's been he spent the whole movie trying to be. Uh and even even jumping ahead real quickly, that last scene where he tries to apologize to the girl but she's leaving because of course her dad's a criminal now and yeah. going to jail and she gives him shit deservedly. Like he doesn't get the girl. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like how yeah. many Spider Man movies does he get the girl? All of them. Yeah. 
<laughs> Except for Amazing Spider-Man 2. Right. <laughs> yeah, the girl. Someone else got the girl. He gets the Death, girl's Death body. got the girl. <laughs> he gets the girl's body. Well, and yeah. then, well, I don't know. Even in the uh, original trilogy, you could argue he doesn't get. He doesn't get the girl. Not either. in the first movie, no. Yeah, I mean, she's she's willing to to let him get her, but he's always he walks away. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, that that whole final battle that you're talking about, you're going through the high school. There's that. There is a, a curious moment with uh, Bokeem Woodbine just kind of happened to hanging out in the back of the school mm-hmm. parking lot, or close enough that between the time Peter got out of the car and the two minutes later when he's running out of the school. He could get there when Keaton called him. And ready to punch. Yeah. yeah. Fucking ready to, ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, that leads to this. Yeah. The, the the finale of all this, the whole, the, you know, Vulture getting on the plane, you know, they're, yeah, they're porting all this Avenger stuff to their new facility and everything. Uh, all of that just get these scenes where there's people flying around and there's like all this. It, well, and especially because it comes on the heels of a much better sequence when he has to take Flash's car. You got Ned as the guy, yeah. you know, in the chair and he has that great, I was looking at porn yeah, line. Yeah. And then you, it's like the suit said, well, that's all well and good, but then we have to put the stock action sequence at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and then the filmmakers were like, well, we don't have a lot of money. And the suits were like, well, then let's do it at night with flashy <laughs> lights up in the sky on a plane and no one will know anything that happens. Seriously, Spider Man Homecoming and Wonder Woman and Batman v Superman. Can you even tell the difference yeah. in all those? <laughs> I mean, there's so many like planes and yep. crashes yep. and. Yeah. All that it's uh, it gets to be a headache after a while. So yes, uh, uh, yeah, Vulture is punished by the end of this. Uh, he goes to jail. Uh, we find out, like you alluded to, that the Zendaya character is actually called MJ or yeah. whatever. She's so good in this. Of course, if you go back and watch this movie again and see her actions throughout this movie, she's kind of stalkery. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she she actually <laughs> references that, right? Does she? Well, somebody says that because she she's says I'm like, not a stalker. I just ha- I just pay attention and remember. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> but then there's the part where she actually goes to detention with just him. To, <laughs> just to draw people. Yeah, exactly. I like drawing people in crisis. He's like, it's Han- you. like Hannibal Burris is like, are you even supposed to be here right now? He's like, oh, I just like drawing people. And it's got those great Captain America little PSAs, which has now become a meme. I'm sure you've seen this. So, oh, it's actually tired. I'm like I, I'm ready for memes in general to die. That was tiring, like the day that it came out. That's, that's my point: is that they are all burning out so fast now. I just think the whole the whole trend is going to go away and yeah, be replaced yeah. by something else. Uh, but yeah, and I even think I like Hannibal Burris's line early in the movie was like, "Pretty sure this guy's a war criminal." Yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, "And you're a health teacher," and he points to the other yeah. side of the street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we all at the very end of this, Aunt May learns that Peter Spider Man. Great yep. scene. What the right? f- <laughs> dun, 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 Great dun, scene dun, dun. again. What this movie has done a lot to subvert. I just ripped on Last Jedi for trying too much to subvert expectations, but we expect to see the Uncle Ben death. Yeah. Nope. Mm -hmm. We expect Aunt May to stay in the dark. Nope. Mm -hmm. And I like that because we're still, again, I don't even like that he's got a suit from Tony Stark that can do thousands of amazing things. Spider-Man has always been a badass on his own without the need for an Iron Man suit. But um, I don't care. Mm -hmm. The Mm -hmm. essence of Spider-Man is so purely here that I'll, I'll... I'll go wherever you want to go. You're at least two movies worth of credit this movie bought for me. I agree. Yeah. And I they're bringing back the same director. Yeah. yeah. Looks like they're going to hire Jake Gyllenhaal to play Mysterio mm-hmm. and bring Great back character. Michael Keaton mm-hmm. somehow. I just love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I love the score, which I didn't like so much the first yeah. time I saw it. But now I find myself singing it. Um, and uh, when we get to the end of this thing, this is one of maybe two or three movies that might win my top spot of all the MCU. Mm-hmm. I just I there's no MCU movie prior to this one or since that I adore enough to just watch every time I see it on the TV guide. Yep. The uh, mid credit scene is Toombs is in jail, approached by someone, and it's from the it's it's uh, is it Nacho? Might be the Nacho character who, well, you know, Nacho character from Better Call Saul. <laughs> uh, he hears that he knows who Spider Man is, and Toombs is like, "Well, if I knew who Spider Man was, he'd be dead." Oh. And that's that's the mid credit scene of that one. Uh, then there's another scene at the tail end because we've had the couple of these Captain America like uh, school videos or uh. whatever. And this is actually making fun of how pointless these end credit scenes are because he sits there and says, you know, patience, that's a virtue. 
you know, like even if it, even if it's not even if it's not worth it by the end, you're glad that you you, you had it or whatever. <laughs> it's so trolly. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> the Stan Lee cameo is he's one of the neighbors in Queens after Peter wrongfully stops a guy from stealing a car that is actually his own car. It's my car. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole neighborhood admonishes Peter for being stupid, and Stan Lee comes out like, "Don't make me come down there, you punk." <laughs> Now we will talk about Thor Ragnarok. Sure. Yeah, Thor Ragnarok is a uh, is a super fun movie. It is. Uh, um, I don't know which one I like better out of those these comedy ones that you're talking about, Spider Man Homecoming or this one. I tend to like this one better because there's a little bit more zanier humor, it and I'm just kind definitely. of a it's it's kind of an attraction for me to have that kind of thing. Um, and plus, Tessa Thompson's so pretty. She's so pretty and so good She's in this so movie. She's so good. I mean, she like it plays on every expectation you have with this badass. First of all, you don't know that she's a badass mm-hmm. or that she's such a badass, like Valkyrie badass. Right. She's drunk all the fucking time. She's got that great entrance where she falls off the fucking platform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh man, she's she doesn't get any jokes in really, but like she's she's funny like i don't know mm-hmm. that character is awesome yeah it really it, she really is i really like uh i really like all the characters in this but uh this one starts off okay so thor has gotten himself uh jailed by this uh underworld demon named mm-hmm. surter mm-hmm. this time clancy brown is uh oh, is voicing that? Surter. That. um uh and uh Surter is uh, is the creature or the demon that is supposed to destroy Asgard. Uh, it's been prophesied. It's going to say it's a prophecy involved. Yeah, to uh, to destroy Asgard, and Thor is there to basically end it. And he kills Surter right off the bat and takes his crown. Mm-hmm. And I never understood why Thor took the crown back to Asgard. I don't know. Like, yes, he literally told him not to do that. By the end of it. It was the right thing to do, according to the narrative of these movies or whatever, but... He should have parallaxed that shit. He should have parallaxed it. <laughs> Bury it on some foreign planet. I don't get it. They go, well, we better take this back to Asgard, because after all, if you put it in the eternal flame, it'll turn into the yeah, big yeah. monster. They, they, they keep went, it in the same room. <laughs> they went through all this bullshit in Dark World saying we can't have two Infinity Stones in the same place. Yep. But we can have the crown and the internal flame in the same fucking place. Oh, God. Anyway, I'll that's neither what, here nor there. What this movie does is immediately announce itself as a comedy, though. Yes, it does. Which is a, a little bit... I mean, I was oh, on no, board with Thor's it. Oh, in a cage. Exactly. What happened? Like, I don't remember Thor... I, he, he's progressed over the movies and the Avengers and stuff like that. I don't remember him being a flat out comedic character though. No. And so this was a little bit of a shock. Of course we we knew that it was going to be funny or we'd heard that it was going to be mm-hmm. funny going into it. But uh luckily he pulls it off and we know Chris Hemsworth has great comic timing and all that stuff. But it was a little jarring that all of a sudden like he's making jokes right from the beginning. I was re- yeah. I was listening to uh uh Sif Pop with Dicer and everything and they had a had a guest on there who's a big comic books guy. And he says he hates this movie because Thor has never been this character mm. at all, ever. And again, basing stuff on your your previous material yeah. and everything. Um, I mean, throughout the movies, he, he is, it does make sense that he's this character. Because, yes, even in Thor, where he's maybe not the funniest character in the world, he still has a lot of moments mm-hmm. in it. In that original Thor, a lot of them just real funny. Movies. Yeah, like where he throws that beer on the ground and goes, oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I need a I, horse. It's only a matter of time before, like, you know, you you throw in the Avengers and all the wisecracking and all that other type of stuff that he would become that type of character or whatever. But, eh, whatever. I, I like it. Um, uh-huh. uh, so he returns to Asgard with the crown, and he, and he discovers that Loki has been uh, impersonating Odin this whole time hilariously yes and there they even had <laughs> he's got anthony hopkins as that line when he walks in, he's like, oh shit <laughs> yeah 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 uh they they go they go there and apparently loki's been putting on like these plays that show his uh heroism from thor the dark world matt damon again playing yeah, man. Uh, um playing loki in this one and uh, Chris Hemsworth's uh, brother, uh, not it Liam, Luke? it's Luke Hemsworth, yeah. plays uh, plays Thor in that play. 
Um, and Sam Neill's playing Odin. Sam Neill, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They uh, so once he finds once he tells Loki he knows the knows everything that's going on. They have where's where's our father? Loki apparently sent him down to Earth where he was in an old folks home. I guess mm-hmm. the old folks home is getting torn down, which immediately reminds me of Sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I nearly wrote an outtake for this. <laughs> I didn't know how I was going to do it, but but had the homeless guy like uh, the government took my yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, they, they've torn it down and before they can even think about where to go next, Dr. Strange has sucked Loki into a portal and he's left a card behind telling him to go to Bleecker Street. Mm-hmm. So Thor goes to Bleecker Street, Dr. Strange and them have a conversation. We saw a little bit of that in Dr. Strange at the end of Dr. Strange. Um, and, uh, tells him that his fa tells him that the that Odin is now in Norway. Did he transport odin to norway or did he take like a commercial i can't remember how that happened actually yeah i feel like he sent odin where odin wanted to go so you feel like odin found him and he he sent him over to norway to that fucking yeah or he's involved somehow or it could be dr strange found him and then yeah because because he's supposed to know when he would know when magical beings come down Mm, and everything um so yeah i think that's how that's how that's gone down so uh thor and loki then go to norway find odin odin's like oh by the way i'm about to die you have a sister i've been (laughs) see i've I've been imprisoning her and as long as i live she's she's in the prison by the way peace and (laughs) and gone yeah and she's and he says like her is her powers get stronger as she goes towards asgard but immediately immediately as soon as she comes into the picture she's on earth yep and Thor tries to throw his hammer, and she's like, fuck that, <laughs> just smashes it. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I'm like, does she really need to go to Asgard at this point? Yeah. And she's got all the power she needs. She well, can- even so, they immediately go to Asgard. Of course, it's Loki doing it, and he tries to stop him. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. you just he just told you. You were there? Yeah. Like, yeah. just uh, don't do that. Go Just jump off the fucking cliff or something like yeah. that. Yeah. You're gods. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. um yeah during the whole bifrost thing where they're going to asgard they both slip off of it and they both end up on this planet mm-hmm. this trash planet almost like transformers the movie yeah. <laughs> um and that's where uh thor thor is uh is almost uh uh kidnapped and eaten by a whole bunch of like ravagers yeah I guess. Yep. <laughs> what do you want to call reverse reverse <laughs> <laughs> There's something, there's probably an R and a V and another R (laughs) in their names. Uh, but Valkyrie shows up and quote unquote saves the day, but she's out for her own gain, taking Thor and making him a uh, gladiator. They get a lot of mileage out of that neck electricity thing. Yes, they do. I mean, it's, it's a little bit overdone. Too much. Yeah. Yeah, Way too much. And also, this is one of the great trailer tragedies of our time. Mm hmm. Because if I had imagine not knowing Hulk was in this movie, oh yeah, yeah, until you're in the middle of this movie, yeah. instead of putting him in the very first and every single trailer you put out, that would have been a moment of such joy and surprise. Yeah, and it's still fun. It's still the movie's best moment, I think, when Thor goes yes, yeah, because it's so pure. He's so happy. But uh, I do feel like the marketing d- department uh, fucked us all over mm-hmm. and uh, robbed us of that. Uh, yep jizz <laughs> inducing they robbed us of our movie jizz, jizz right. inducing scene you're obsessed with the uh the jacking off today. <laughs> it's because i watched that uh, happy time murders trailer too many times oh <laughs> oh i see there's a, at the end of that there's a very extended jizz joke i don't know if you've seen it but. i've <laughs> seen a trailer um, before we did the summer preview but i don't remember that when we're done here we're going to watch it we are going to watch it <laughs> But uh, Thor wants to get out of this. Uh, Jeff Goldblum plays the um, The Grandmaster. Yeah, Yeah, by the way, and I don't know if we confirmed this on the the broadcast. It may have been, or the podcast. Um, I did in the notes. But Jeremy, when you mentioned that the Collector and the Grandmaster and a few others were like this high-profile, like ancient being, group of beings, uh, I did confirm that. And it sounds fucking cool as hell, too. Oh, yeah? Like that whole cabal of these eccentric you know immortal uh beings basically mm-hmm. and how they fit into this narrative really really cool that mm. could be fun i can't yeah. wait i would love to see 
Grandmaster and the Collector get together and and do something. I, I don't know if they're they're planning on doing that. But Play like, hopscotch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dodgeball. <laughs> Table tennis. Yes. Yeah. But Goldblum is Pete Goldblum. Yeah, in, in true Goldblum fashion, he's like, if you can beat my champion, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, like, uh, yeah, and Loki's gotten in good with him. And, like, Loki got there first mm-hmm. through this Bifrost time continuum. He went straight harem, for the del- devil's anus. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Loki's sort of gotten in good with the Grandmaster during all this thing, and he hasn't even seen who who the champion is i don't know how but mm. uh it's been weeks he's been there and he hasn't seen i guess nobody's fought hulk this entire time no, no. or he just never attended it intent he just goes off and does loki things while they do the uh, whatever um so yeah thor and hulk fight we have we have seen this before we saw it in the avengers mm-hmm. but this time it's like gladiator style and uh pretty good fight yeah pretty good fight thor starts to start to get an inkling that he doesn't need his hammer Mm -hmm. um uh through some like you know like uh, hulk is like a like crushing him at some point and suddenly he turns into like we said in the vit sins video starts turning into raiden (laughs) Um, and uh and uh he's about to he's about to actually beat hulk but uh, of course grandmaster is like you know uh let me shock this guy and make sure that i still have my have two awesome champions at this point uh thor concocts there's another prison break now thor yeah. concocts a prison break uh prints enough pamphlets yeah exactly oh with cork man yeah. that god i i am on board with new zealand humor man like, oh man ta- me too taika watiti flight of the concords we both thought that this was voiced by uh, the Korg character was uh voiced by brett mckenzie yeah 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 because he sounds exactly like him uh the fucking uh the the things we do in our what is it in the shadows Uh, what we do in the shadows what we do in the shadows that he is fucking hilarious in this movie taika Mm -hmm. watiti Mm -hmm. is and all that dry humor is always lands for me oh yeah it's good stuff yeah uh but thor uh sort of appeals to valkyrie and learns that she was also she was also in asgard she was a valkyrie and she was one of those that uh got defeated by hella when hella went uh, crazy mm-hmm. in some long ago 10 beautiful sequence when very they do beautiful that. sequence awesome. yeah uh doesn't get her quite quite right away hulk tells him the uh quinjet and tells <laughs> him where the quinjet is uh thor finds it and then hulk gets on there and smashes it yep getting on the ship and then turns back into banner and then thor through some weird fucking heimdall connection is it heimdall is able to show him what's going on at asgard and and uh tells him oh yeah you need to find the biggest portal uh yeah the end of this movie is definitely not its best part i don't think yeah uh, i don't think so because yeah. it takes us back to the hella being important and mm. she's the, yeah she and is the Hel- weakest link yeah hella is a <laughs> super weak link in this because when they're not there at the grandmaster planet they have to go back to asgard and hella is just basically giving a history lesson of asgard mm-hmm. to carl urban the yes whole time. expositional carl urban. that's right and uh and uh, by the way, loved my uh, Carl Urban commando. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I love that pun more than I should. But yeah, she. she it's one of those things. Um, I had my, my the first time I ever had a problem with power in movies. There's a terrible movie called The Covenant. That oh came yeah, out, uh, about a decade ago, mm-hmm. and it's about these kids who uh, have all these powers. But when they turn 18, they get even more power sweet and and so like there's this one guy who's kind of like almost like magneto who's like why should we uh continue hiding that we have this power and why don't we just rule the world and all this other other shit um but like they do so many fucking things the one guy the main guy in the covenant has a part where the his car is driving explodes into a million pieces and then he's able to get it all back together and dry and keep driving it wow and i'm like what you can do that do you have do you have what can you not do interestingly you remember who's in it sebastian stan oh yeah that's right <laughs> oh, Sebastian <wow>. Stan. <laughs> um but uh yeah i always have a problem with movies telling me this person is powerful but they'll be even more powerful if mm-hmm. and hella shows right off the bat she can smash the hammer she doesn't have really any weaknesses at all uh but she gets closer to asgard she gets even stronger mm-hmm. i don't 
where did we see that? Did we see anything where she did something that was even better yeah. than that? Once she, you smash the hammer, you don't you don't have well, much. Well, she she throws the pointy things. She yeah. ma- she makes a giant wolf. Oh yeah, she makes oh uh, yeah, That's well true. well she goes down and resurrects a giant wolf. Yeah, well. That's a difference. Yeah, goes down and resurrects a whole bunch of fucking dead people like she needs an army or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Never understood that either. Yeah, everything about Hella just sort of drags this movie down and then they finally get there and they fight her and nothing that Thor or anybody can do until they're like, "All right, well, maybe that prophecy was something we needed to fulfill this whole time." And they get Loki to go down. I don't know well, why. After- why do you trust Loki to do this? <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> goes down loki's got that little that's that segment where he's walking past the tesseract mm-hmm. and like ooh, yeah i wonder what's gonna happen yeah now. and he i've uh, not been down here once in which, the last which year doesn't pay off by the way i don't think that's a spoiler to say but that whole thing about him getting the tesseract no does nothing does does nothing no it, it, it just puts it, it on makes, the ship yeah it makes it easier yeah yeah so uh they put the crown in surter uh, surter arises and and smashes Asgard while Thor and everybody fly off the planet. And of course, I've gone over. I mean, we've glossed over like the fact that Bruce turns back into Hulk, mm. and, and uh, you know the the funniest scene, one of the funniest scenes in all the movies, is him jumping out of the helicopter and just just slamming <laughs> into the Bifrost. But yeah, like they fly off in the ship and then korg again is like it's like oh that's not too much damage <laughs> so with a little bit of work we can uh we can we can be a we can be a people again and then it just blows up He's like oh no that's over that's gone he's like what's wrong with mike mike's dead <laughs> oh no he's he's back again he's dead he's dead <laughs> <laughs> um we're gonna hop on that spaceship <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah uh they they uh fly off thor and loki have a little heart to heart because you, you think uh that'll do well on earth and whatever and then thanos the ship shows up it is. Bum, and bum, bum. as we all know in avengers infinity war because there's only one highway in space that's right there's only one play you can just you just it's 2d it's mm-hmm. one it's one road that goes all the way and you just it's like you know, uh super mario brothers yeah it's kind of like super mario brothers S- side scrolling it's kind of yeah it's kind of like that yeah with occasional uh sewer pipes that take you to <laughs> yeah, other devil's places. anus is just one of those <laughs> sewer pipes <laughs> um then there's a another very end scene with grandmaster is like oh you know uh, uh there are, a revolution there always has to be a good side and a bad side <laughs> and uh and uh I, I good news everybody it's a tie <laughs> um i hate that fucking thing yeah uh stanley cameo he's the barber who cuts thor's hair and yeah i i hate i hate that scene yeah because thor is like this badass like oh i'm gonna go take on uh the thing and he's like please don't cut my hair mr he, well Butcherman. it's more of a machine that he's about to yeah, use yeah. than it is and yes as i've said before and this is what led to the uh, chris hemsworth is way better looking than me scene <laughs> he gets his haircut and he comes out all cut you know short hair yep. and everything. I'm like damn he's good looking chris hemsworth man holy shit man mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah how you doing how, how you doing, doing? <laughs> Uh, that leads us to Black Panther, which is going to be the last one that we talk about actually here, because yep. we have talked about Infinity War, and plus, Infinity War is still new enough that I don't think we want to do spoilers mm-hmm. for it. Um, so, so Black Panther is the end of our Phase Three. Or what we're going to do on the MCU, even though there is a ton more movies in this phase. Uh, Black Panther came out earlier in the year um and uh what a pleasant surprise this was hell yeah Yeah, hell yeah this was this is still one of the better movies of the year so far i think so yeah um this is sort of uh the sort of the aftermath of civil war um uh t'chaka who died at the end of uh end of that now we're passing passing the torch over to uh Mm t'challa and uh and uh he's going to become black panther of course there's a ceremony at the beginning of this where all the tribes on Wakanda come over and uh, they either say, okay, we don't challenge this or we want to challenge you to a fight to see who, who gains the throne. And he gets one challenger and I can't remember the one tribe's name. Oh, it's a uh, Jabari tribe. Oh, Jabari tribe. Yeah. It's M'Baku who fights him. And of course, uh, T'Challa wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, that is a cool scene. I yeah, think. they're under the waterfall. CGI yeah, is see, I stupid. hate the CGI out that where they're talk where they show all the people on the mountain. Mm-hmm. But the scene itself with in the little like pond or mm-hmm. whatever with the waterfall and everything and all the all the soldiers like with the the spears yeah. like basically you, you're not getting out of this. Yeah, yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. Cool. yeah. And um, so uh, yeah, so he wins, and so it the the plot that develops here is that uh that we get the we get the return of Ulysses Claw Ulysses Claw mm-hmm. the uh, Andy Circus character from uh Age Ultron? of Ultron yeah um he's in vibranium he's in the business of vibranium yeah. yes. yes and they go to a museum i believe it's in london or whatever and uh and he's got uh he's got a man named Eric Killmonger on his crew which is uh the Michael B Jordan character Michael B. Jordan is like looking at these artifacts and he's asking uh, the guide there, like, you know, where did you get this and all that? And he he knows, hey, you stole this shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, whatever, there's a weapon in there that does have some vibranium or whatever. So they Mm -hmm. take that. Uh, He wants to sell the vibranium. He wants to sell the vibranium to a buyer in Korea. And we find out that the the buyer is the Martin Freeman character, the Mm -hmm. Ross character. So everybody in Wakanda sort of figures this out. They find out that Ulysses Claw, who is a guy that they've wanted either imprisoned or killed for a really long time, is going to be in Korea selling this vibranium and everything. And uh, so one of uh, one of T'Challa's friends, his name is Wakabi. Mm. This is, is this the Daniel, the Daniel Kaluuya, Daniel Kaluuya mm-hmm. character? Has always wanted this guy dead, but he but T'Challa's like, I want to I want to take him back and take him to justice and all that sort of a different philosophy between them. And like, that's one of the things that his father failed doing mm-hmm. his father failed in getting this guy back. So it's been a, a bone of contention with, uh, with, uh, with people here, but they go to Korea. The, the secret buyer is, is Ross. They go to, they go to uh, Busan. Yes, they do. Uh, yeah. And they don't take any trains. No, no train to Busan. But, um, Have you seen that yet? By the way? No, it's really, Oh, good. you, this is your jam. I thought it was about zombies. It is, it's, but it's basically Snowpiercer with with zombies, and it's well. See, I like that idea. I just I'm, I'm, I if I'll watch it just from the way you guys both just <laughs> reacted, but I just filed it along with zombie movie. I just don't get into that. No, it's, it's, it's not a zombie movie. It's a movie that has zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's okay. much this is something that. that's it's just it's a lot funnier and more entertaining than your average okay you know, oh, mm. zombie movie. You um, mean all of The Walking Dead? Yes, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> um. Uh, there's a big battle. Uh, there's a big battle in in Busan, and uh, there's so much cool tech. Does Shuri stay thing. behind? Is she in Wakanda controlling yes. the car? There's okay. a car. There's like a uh, yeah, like a I guess an, not an autonomous car, but a car a that you control. Yeah, yeah, a remote yeah. car. Um, and uh, and she can control. That's another cool thing. That's the the coolest thing about Wakanda is just all the freaking technology yeah, and all yeah. the knowledge that they have is amazing yeah and shuri is a great character at first when i at first when I, she shows up i was like okay she's gonna be the annoying sister mm-hmm. but then she turns into so much more yeah, yeah. and i love her yeah she's i want great. to marry her <laughs> um but um there's a there's a big battle scene here they end up they end up catching him and just like in winter soldier where they have cap ready and everything the world is watching yeah. can't kill ulysses claw here we're <laughs> gonna have to take him into custody um so they take him into custody and ross is interviewing him when killmonger comes through a fucking part of the wall and in that dope ass mask yeah exactly god damn yeah <laughs> and, love uh, this movie i yeah. know and uh and takes him away ross gets hurt so they have to end up taking him back to Wakanda, much like in Thor: The Dark World. They had to take oh, yeah. Natalie Portman to Asgard, <laughs> um, and uh, so they take him to Wakanda, and uh, they're going to to heal him. But there's a sort of a rift between uh, T'Challa and um, Wakabi. Um, the uh, there's a sort of a rift here because he promised he'd bring him back. Now he's free again. Killmonger ends up killing him on his own killing ulysses claw mm-hmm. on his own bringing him back and telling him i'm done everything that you've ever wanted mm-hmm. and he is able to uh challenge the crown because he just happens to be the 
son of uh, the brother of T'Challa. So he's the rightful heir, correct? Or is uh, he no, is he no. cousins no. with T'Challa? He, 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 challengeable he heir. Has, yeah, he has the he has the right to challenge. Okay. Uh because T'Chaka is you know if you're talking about direct line of the T'Challa is the direct line, but his brother who was played by Sterling K Brown mm-hmm. uh is the, his brother and he had a son and now they're in Oakland at the beginning mm-hmm. of this movie. Um so and <laughs> I'm going to bring up a curious moment because Forrest Whitaker plays a character who's older, he plays the friend of Sterling K Brown in Oakland. And this is like 1992. <laughs> and I was like, if you want to know what Forrest Whitaker looked like in 1992, kind of looks like what he looks like now (laughs) (laughs) all you have to do is rent a copy of the crying game and find out that forrest whitaker looks pretty much like forrest whitaker he does not look like that dude that dude's like 17 or something that kid i'm like like yeah i mean you could just can't can't you just young up forrest whitaker Mm -hmm. a little bit um you did with kurt russell yeah exactly um so Killmonger comes back and he says, I've got a right to this to this throne. And Killmonger has done a lot of shit. No he shit, man. He was a soldier and he's killed a lot of people. In fact, killed so many people that every time he kills somebody, he burns part of his skin. Mm. He's got like a fucking like one of those. What do you call those things where like you can put your hand in it? And Gloves. It, huh? Gloves. <laughs> Gloves. It's just like gloves. Uh, those, it's exactly those little, like those little gloves. pin cushion things you can oh, stick your yeah. stick your hand in and make an imprint yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever. It's what his whole fucking body looks like yeah. or whatever. And there's no doubt when they fight that he's going to win. Yep. He yeah, is the strong. Brutal. Yeah, he's the stronger. Yeah, it's a brutal fight. Exactly. And uh, and uh, but that's also one of the things that bothers me about this movie is that you know what's going to happen from this point forward. Like he's yeah. going to win. Mm-hmm. Black Panther still, T'Challa still alive. Even though he gets thrown off a fucking water. Yeah, off. he's going to come back and all that stuff. So it's this movie breaks so much new ground. This is like kind of disappointing that mm-hmm. they follow this just tired structure. Yeah, and it, again, you know, for all the new ground it does break, it's yet another Marvel movie that gives us roughly same versus same in the final battle. Mm-hmm. Almost exactly same yeah, versus yeah. same. Yeah. They both had the same, you know, potion. Mm-hmm rhubarb whatever it was <laughs> <laughs> don't steal another man's rhubarb <laughs> and uh they both have a suit yeah uh with vibranium yeah and the same versus same with a bunch of and then you get the rhinos the movie does kind of fall apart for me toward the end mm-hmm. uh but it's uh, so much right right up until then that i don't really care i i know he's gonna win and win back wakanda but uh, that's what i want to happen mm-hmm. yeah so uh, this suit is awesome though i love this suit the building up the potential energy and uh, the kinetic energy and yep. just uh and uh being able to like unleash an explosion and everything i was told this was this happened like four or five times in infinity war i never saw it yeah but it's always in a wide it's shot it's in a wide shot if it, it's, it doesn't count god damn it <laughs> they were too busy showing you the close-ups of roadie yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> soaring over the battle firing machine guns yes um but yeah he gets thrown off the waterfall they find they go to that other tribe the uh the jabari tribe the jabari tribe they go to the jabari tribe and ask them for help uh, but then they find out, oh, T'Challa drifted all the way down here. What a cool scene, though. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Because that dude is so great. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He's awesome. Oh, yeah. He's like, uh, he's like, uh, so yeah, he's here all along, and you know, we he'd die of shock if we flashed a flashlight in his eyes right now, <laughs> and he's got hell to look forward to. Um, <laughs> um, they uh, so they because Wakanda has magic medicine and everything, mm-hmm. they're able to like revive him and everything. Uh, and yes, and then it leads to this big battle here at the end. And there is, uh, you know, of course they talk about the, uh, the little, the trains they have at Wakanda, the little vibranium thing. It like, uh, the things like. And they balance they it. They balance like, it's it. It's where there's no resistance when it goes through. Right, right. To be honest with you, I need to watch this movie again and I will. But the end of this movie and the end of Infinity War kind of like oh yeah just blend together because it's a bunch of CG, it's wide open plains in Wakanda, and it's you know just same versus same again. Mm-hmm. And it's I will say though this is the first uh, this is the first uh, movie in a while that's had three badass female characters. Mm-hmm. We talked about this in the review, but 
it it's it's so rare to even have one and remember <laughs> doctor strange couldn't even get rachel mcadams well marvel any. couldn't can't really get women right yeah, yeah. it's uh, and and it's one thing that I, I i wanted to i wanted to talk about like that is one thing that you do notice throughout this run is how badly women are treated mm-hmm. in this thing because it's just uh, it's just they they don't know what to do mm-hmm. it's it's obvious they need either another female writer or a director or something which they will have for uh mm-hmm. for captain marvel yes yes but uh okoye is a great character mm-hmm. another badass uh nakia lupita nyango uh who i love as well um and then of course the shuri character just all three of them one's one smart the uh one is a badass and mm-hmm. i think one's sort of like a a mix of both has smarts mm-hmm. and and badass she's a smart ass yeah she's a smart ass <laughs> we successfully made it a shih tzu with a bulldog what <laughs> <laughs> we got we called it a bullshit <laughs> um so uh yeah this was a really good movie made over a billion dollars so far worldwide yes, it has and uh it'll it's an interesting uh it's an interesting sort of dynamic here because avengers infinity war is now fourth all-time worldwide it's already past black panther mm-hmm. as far as worldwide is concerned domestic though there's still a race yeah and black panther is going to be at around 700 million it's right yeah it's right at 700 million right and now. infinity war just crossed the 600 million mark it still made 25 million with deadpool and all yeah. that but now you have solo coming out and it'll be interesting to see if it can ladder up to to that point because it's it, it doesn't make any sense worldwide it's blown everything away mm-hmm. yeah whatever um uh let's see the uh the end credit scene here the mid credit scene shows t'challa talking at the un promising to open up the borders of wakanda to the rest of the world which they do which they do and uh final scene shows bucky nearly recovered from the events of civil war still hanging out in wakanda uh stanley cameo here he's at the casino in korea mm-hmm. um and there's a point where uh t'challa wins a whole bunch of money mm. and just walks off and then uh uh martin freeman's like uh you you left your money back here or whatever and stan lee comes over and he's like i'll tell you what i'll do i'll bring this money over here and i'll just put it over here and then i guess he steals the money (laughs) (laughs) so that does it i uh, i think we want to rank these at some point right i'll tell you what let's tease it for we'll open up the next episode with our official syncast rank that's good because i need a little bit of time yeah uh, yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to. Sort and I think it out we're too. doing a mailbag episode next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll That'll do. We'll combine. So those. this will be. This is. I mean, we've already been asked this. This is essentially a mailbag question to rank them. So mm-hmm. we will rank them on the next episode. Yeah. Uh, we will also finally get to tons of fucking questions yeah. that we haven't answered. Yeah. And uh, keep more new ones coming in too, because we've got some great ones, but we can we can always uh, get some new blood in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, keep going to uh. Syncast presented by CinemaSins on Facebook. Keep going to SoundCloud. Uh, we have a Twitter, our CinemaSins Twitter. That's we Jeremy. have a Twitter. We have a Twitter. Ooh, uh, and we're all a Twitter about it. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, yeah, Barrett's on SoundCloud. I'm on Facebook. You can get all three of us That's somehow, right, baby. some way. Um, but that'll do it for this week. It's Chris Agnes and Jeremy Scott and Barrett Share. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. We were talking last night about Jason Bateman and how frustrated that we were about that interview. And he was like, hey, Bateman apologized today. I think he said all the right things. And I was like, yeah, now let's see what Morgan Freeman says at his next press conference. Yeah. And Simser hadn't heard yet. And he's like, oh, God, do I even want to Google that? And I was like, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> what's, what's very strange is that I was expecting his name to pop up right around the time all the other names were popping up yep. oh really this hurts like like i don't want to be all first world problem me about it but this hurts like bill cosby hurt like this is a, a guy that i didn't ever want to find out this kind of I shit know. about. and I, again I, from what i read this is all pretty new and it doesn't sound like anyone's accusing him of outright sexual assault just inappropriate touching and comments 
And that is bad enough. You get the feeling anybody of his age, not anybody, but a lot of people mm. of his age, like, are, are, are they're doing the uncle, up. They're doing the Uncle Leo explanation from yeah, Seinfeld. I'm like, old. I'm old. Everybody does it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm confused. <laughs> that episode was literally just on today. I, I can have, never find Seinfeld. Well, what? No, I, I, I've i actually looked for it, it recently. It is literally goddamn everywhere. It pretty much is. I also, <laughs> Hulu. I have seen it recently. I think it's every episode's on Hulu. Also, I realized the last few days, because this channel has been playing um, the ninth season, the final season of Seinfeld, which whenever I see nine for the season number on an episode, my instinct is to cringe because that last final episode is so <laughs> yeah. bad. Um uh, but I have now watched like the first 15 or 17 of season. They're all fucking classics. Oh, yeah, man. Like that show in its final season before the finale was humming. Yeah. And we forget that because like, I mean, I'll, I'll round them up at some point and bring them down to another podcast. But like, there's not a bad episode in the bunch. And they're all like super memorable. Well, that's why yeah. they, they decided to end it around that time was they wanted to go out on top. They yep. didn't want to have those, you know, later years where, you know. It's just the same old, same old over and over. And yep. That, that, you got to hand it to him, man. I mean, if if that finale weren't that bad, like, as as revered as that show is, it would be, like, in a different stratosphere. Mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> that ending was so fucking terrible. Yeah. I uh. mean, it's one of the worst finales ever. And I think even most everybody involved with the show has acknowledged it on some level. It plays like a um, one of those uh, like a clip, clip show. shows. Yeah. yeah. That's why it's so bad. Yeah. And then, yeah, just a weird casting of John Panette as a as a witness to them not reporting a crime. Yeah. yeah, and what bothered me about that is that, yes, they're assholes. They've been shown to be assholes throughout the whole series. But they're never assholes on the, the level of, like, laughing at a dude that's getting jacked. Don't you think? No, I agree. I think they pushed it. And I even read that, well, I guess Larry David had read about this Good Samaritan law in some state or country and was really fascinated by it and yeah. decided to come up with an episode built around it. You know, I, I get the the arguments when people write essays about how, you know, the four leads of Seinfeld are all psychopaths or mm. they're all, they all hate each other or what have you. They're all bad people. They are, yeah. but they're not that bad. No, no, They no. stole a loaf of bread. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they But were... they was driven to that. He was driven to that. There was a reason that he did that. There's no reason that they would laugh at this this dude on the street. You know? No, I agree. I agree. I, they they overshot it there, but we've already talked too long about Seinfeld. <laughs> there was one I think it is in that finale though, because doesn't don't they get Steinbrenner on the stand in that in that Yeah, I'm sure they, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just the one part where Jerry Stiller gets up and he's like, You gave three million dollars to Hideki Arabu <laughs> 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 i love that that's not even the first because there's that whole episode where he meets him like in the regular run and he gives him shit about a trade he made or something mm, like, yeah he, he comes over be- traded jay buter yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he comes over because yeah. he thinks uh he thinks george is dead yeah and that's, that's right. the that's only right. thing that he says yeah. he's like i'm so sorry <laughs> he's like how did you trade jay buter <laughs>